Ever since Jacksonville and Arizona played on this field to open the 2011 season, it appeared these two teams were on a collision course for what's about to take place tonight. And in the playoffs, the two-week playoff season, Jacksonville and Arizona at home taking care of business. And tonight, the Sharks and the Rattlers in Arena Bowl 24. It is not just that Jacksonville and Arizona won more football games in the regular season than every other team in the AFL. It's the way they won those games that makes tonight feel like the perfect ending to the season. The two highest rated quarterbacks, the two most explosive offenses, and the two most opportunistic defenses. Yes, this is the perfect ending, a true test. What every league wants on the final night of the season, it is best against best. The best quarterback ever to combine the Arena Football League and the National Football League in his career is the man to my left, Kurt Warner. And Kurt, I know both teams are trying to be the number one team tonight, but the number one story has to be Aaron Garcia. Well, it is. For the Jacksonville Sharks, tonight is all about the old man, the veteran, the 17-year veteran, 40 years old, still playing this wonderful game. He's pretty much accomplished everything there is to accomplish in arena football. But there is one thing that eludes him, and that's an Arena Bowl championship. Tonight, he gets his first opportunity to try to write that part of his resume. And Kurt, who knew when you retired from the Arizona Cardinals that that opened the door for Nick Davila to become the most successful quarterback in the state of Arizona? Well, as we said earlier, so much of the fanfare this week has been about Aaron Garcia and his first trip here. But that guy on the other side of the ball has been pretty impressive this year as well. Just named the league MVP yesterday. More touchdowns than anybody in the league. And with Arizona being the number one seed all year long, it has come because of the leadership and consistency of Nick Davila. Well, we have a third and fourth member of our broadcast team tonight, Anthony Heron and also Ari Wolf. We keep the quarterback theme going first with Ari. All right, I'm here with Aaron Garcia. And Aaron, 17 years of hard work, 17 years of playing this game you love. What are the emotions like heading into the title game? Man, I'm excited. This is, and I can't even talk right now, to be honest with you. It's time. It's a game we got to win. We've been working for this all year as a team, and we're here. We're ready to go. Now, Aaron, you guys lost to Arizona all the way back in week one. What did you learn from that game, and what are the keys for you guys to come out with the title? Man, I got to make those. I got to protect the football. I mean, that's what I learned. These guys were young. We were just learning, you know, to each other. We done came together. We've learned how to lose and how to win, and we're going to finish it off with a win. All right, good luck today. All right, thank you. This is Anthony. All right. Is Bill. Anthony, I love you. All right, for more on the Rattlers, let's check in with Anthony Harris. And Ari, I'm with league MVP Nick Davila. So much of the story, for good reason, is about Aaron Garcia and his legacy. But you won a championship tonight, Nick. What's it going to take for you and your team to get that done? You know, as an offense, we got to take care of the football. And as a defense, we got to get the football. And, uh, you know, uh, it's going to come down to who has more possessions. And uh, like last time we played them, it was a close game, so I expect it to be a good one. And you and your team, you obviously beat Jacksonville in the season opener. Anything you guys took from that opening win that helps you tonight? That uh, that was two teams a long time ago that are a lot different now. And, uh, you know, you just got to go out there and play the game. It's a kid's game and just go out there and have fun. Got the right attitude, Nick. Good luck tonight. Thank you. Thank you. And Paul, a lot of championship juice in the building. Let's get it going. The stage is set for Arena Bowl 24. The Arizona Rattlers and the Jacksonville Sharks. Only one team will be called the best. Stick around to find out who that is. We talked about from day one about being special or being average. This is a special group. You've been a special group all year long. Okay? We also talked about finishing. We're going to finish the season tonight. Okay? I love you. Keep your poise together. Okay? Keep the poise. Stay together. We're a family. Even keel for 60 minutes. It's a 60-minute ball game now. Ebb and flow. Great things are going to happen. Bad things are going to happen. It's part of this game. You guys have known know that now. Let's go out there and let it all hang out. Have fun. Don't too, put too much pressure on yourself. Have fun. You got six months, man. Go out there and let it lay it all out on the line. Oh, yeah. All right. Arena Football Friday one more time. Arena Bowl 24 is moments away. Rules of the game presented by Napa. Eight players at first side. You're going to see a couple playing offense and defense. Non-stop clock in the first half and the second half until the final minute of each half. No such thing as punting. Very limited blitzing for the defense. And the high motion man, you'll see him early and often, gives that offense a distinct, unique Arena Football League advantage. Those are the rules of the game presented by Napa Know-How. Arizona going to receive the kickoff. 
Paul Burmeister and Kurt Warner in the booth. Ari Wolf and Anthony Heron on the sideline. I like the crowd already, Kurt. Thought it might be a late arriving crowd, but they were early. Well, you know, my last arena game was actually played in this building, in the Arena Bowl some 13, 14 years ago. And this place was rocking then. It's rocking tonight. What a tremendous atmosphere for arena football. Back to receive Virgil Gray led the AFL with five kickoff returns for touchdowns in the regular season. And the Rattlers with some issues picking up that football. Well, one thing about Arizona is they don't practice inside during the week, Paul. So this is the first time that Virgil Gray gets an opportunity to catch the ball off of the net. You see it, you know, there that he doesn't read it real well. Ball gets away from him. They don't, aren't, don't get a chance for a return this first time out. But a lot of that could have to do with the fact that they don't get in this building to catch those balls off the net very often. Arizona, number two scoring offense at 62 points per game, led by the MVP of the league, Nick Davila. Davila gets it out quickly, completes to Chris Jackson. Tackle made by Mishai Robinson. And as long as we mention Mishai Robinson, let's roll the Jacksonville defense because Robinson has been outstanding. Number one on the team with 11 interceptions. Roche Jackson also been excellent. Number two tackler in the AFL. The pressure will be provided by number 44, Derek Summers, number four in the AFL in sacks. Davila looking deep, incomplete. That'll bring up third and short. They were talking a lot this week about taking what the defense gives them, not trying to make too many big plays early, but you see on the second play of the game, they come out with a little stop and go move, uh, try to get the defensive back to bite up, try to get over the top, get a quick one early, but uh, great hook play by Mishai Robinson. All right, third down and short. In the National Football League, we'd see blitzing on this one, Kurt, but limited blitzing on third down and two. Davila to Jackson, first down to Arizona. Tackle made by LaRache Jackson. That's really what I expect a lot from Arizona tonight is really being patient. That's what Nick Davila has done so well this year. He hasn't made many mistakes, only 10 interceptions to go with his 117 touchdowns. And a lot of it has been because he hasn't tried to push the ball too far down the field. He's willing to take what the defense gives him, and we've seen it already early in this game. Chris Jackson called in after Rod Windsor. Late in the regular season, went back to the National Football League to play for Cleveland. A little more about his story throughout the evening. Again, off of three steps. Look at that anticipation and accuracy. Davila to Jackson. Another Arizona first down, this time a gain of 17. We've talked about how good Mishai Robinson is in that slot. He's a ball hawk. You know, more PBUs or pass breakups this year than anybody in the Arena Football League. The way to beat him is to use timing. You see on that play right there, Davila puts his back foot in the ground, lets the ball go with a great timing route. That's the way you have to beat Mishai in the slot. First and 10 from the 11. Davila just punches it out to Trandon Harvey inside the five yard line. Tackle made by Jackson. But that's a gain of nine. And you're seeing already the ability to use all of their receivers. You know, this team has three 1,000-yard receivers. You mentioned that they lost Rod Windsor to the NFL, but they just feel like they can continue to plug guys in. Those guys have stepped up, played all year long. They're interchangeable within this offense, and we're seeing it early. He's picking different guys, finding guys with the ball, and letting them make plays for him. Arizona Rattlers have now entered the rev zone. And there's your first touchdown of the night. Cody Armstrong from two yards out. See, in this situation here, they bring Jason Gathers in motion. They almost make it look like he's going to get the ball. But in this situation, they fake to him, pitch it to Odie Armstrong. Easy run. You don't see that a lot in arena football, but uh, it's nice when you can take a nice little pitch. You don't have to try to get in that eight-yard end zone and let that big guy do all the work for you. Jason Witzak right down the middle in Arizona. One drive, a touchdown, and an extra point, and a seven-point lead. Odie Armstrong with 18 touchdowns on the season, and the Rattlers with a seven-point lead.
This Arena Football Game is brought to you in part by Aaron's. You don't need credit. All you need is Aaron's. Nobody beats Aaron's. Nick Davila starting out sharp. Four out of five, 41 yards. Six plays, 43 yards for the Rattler offense. Seven to nothing. And now we get a chance to see Aaron Garcia and the Sharks offense respond. That is if Jeff Hewley doesn't take it back for a touchdown because final game of the regular season, very first kickoff, he took it back. First game of the playoffs, first kickoff, took it back for six. He's been extremely impressive in his return role. Nothing better to give a team a spark early. When you know the nerves are going in this big game, everybody's trying to make that play early. It's nice as a quarterback if you can get a nice return, even a touchdown off a return. Settle those nerves a little bit, settle into the game, and play with the game you play. And you mentioned earlier, Kurt, that Kevin Guy and the Arizona Rattlers um, deriving some motivation from how much we've all been talking about Aaron Garcia and the Rattler offense coming to play early. I think when you're the number one team in the league, the number one seed in the league, you expect to be talked about when you get to the Arena Bowl. But so much attention on Aaron Garcia being his first time. But they've kind of got overshadowed a little bit this week. Big hit by Marquise Floyd, the defensive back on Jeff Hewley. And here is Aaron Garcia playing in his very first Arena Bowl. Check out the big hit by Marquise Gray right there. Dropping Jeff Hewley at the nine-yard line. Hewley and Jamarco Simmons to Garcia's left. Also, Jomo Wilson creating trips. He's the man in high motion. Plenty of time. Jomo Wilson is deep. Catches it the fourth time for six points. Garcia to Wilson. And the Sharks respond. That's the way you like to get the nerves out. If you can't get the return guy to get that big touchdown, first play touchdown is always nice to get those nerves out. You saw on that play, it was just really a Poco route where his receiver got a chance to read the safeties. He split the safeties. Aaron put the ball up, gave him a chance to make the play. Jomo Wilson, his big play guy all year long, comes up with a great play. 41 yards, Aaron Garcia to Jomo Wilson. Marco Gabazzoli. Up and in, but whistles prior to the kick. Before the snap, false start, 99 offense. Five yards, retry. Here we see Aaron Garcia looking deep to Jomo Wilson. A few bobbles. Hauls it down in the end, and that's all that matters. So Capazzoli. Seeing if he can knock it through from further out, and he cannot. The Arizona Rattlers maintain a one-point lead. And so much of this play, these big plays, comes off the protection up front. But you see, Marquise Floyd was in a great position to make a play on that ball, but he got turned around a little bit. Jomo Wilson, great concentration. The ball's bouncing around a little bit, but uh, he made sure to get concentration on it, snag the ball. Let's check in with Ari Wolf. Aaron, your first ever Arena Bowl, first throw ends up in a touchdown. How sweet is that? That's good, but it's a long night. I gotta make I gotta make a lot more throws like that. Actually probably put it out there a little farther for him, to be honest with you. Uh, your guy came through and made the catch, but did you guys think you'll be able to settle down now after getting that first score? We're already settled now. That's a touchdown. I so thought you were excited. To do? I'm excited. <laughs> I'm gonna stay excited all night. That's not gonna change. Okay. All right, thanks, Aaron. Ari Aaron, thank you very much. And our Aaron Garcia continues to stay red hot in the postseason. He is 38 out of 48. Now that's only 10 incompletions. He now has 13 touchdowns to go along with just 10 incompletions in two plus games. Well, coming into this year in the playoffs, that's the one thing that's kind of been a black mark on Aaron Garcia's resume. You know, coming into this year, I believe he was two and eight uh, in, in his playoff experience. But you know, he's obviously come out and played well. Wanted to get to this point, wanted to have an opportunity to win a championship, and he's been a big part of the reason why the Sharks are here tonight. Virgil Gray brought down at the seven-yard line, tackle made by LaRoche Jackson. So how did the Arizona Rattlers get here? Well, pretty much by dominating their way through the regular season. 18-2, and two. MVP Nick Davila, quarterback, three wide receivers over 1,000 yards. Most impressive, though, with all due respect to Nick Davila, and he had a lot to do with this. How about a turnover margin of plus 33? Jacksonville was second best 
at plus 20. I thought we were talking about arena football. Man. You don't get turnovers in arena football. Plus 33. They created 54 turnovers defensively this year. Extremely impressive. It's easy to see why they're the number one seed in the league. Dabala in rhythm once again. How about that catch by Jason Gathers in the Jacksonville territory. Gain of 17. Tackle made by Vishai Robinson. And you can see the big body on Jason Gathers. One of the things Nick talked about all week was his ability to be able to put the ball up and allow this big body, long arm guy to go up and get the ball. And another way they're going to try to attack Nishai Robinson, who's a small guy. Keep the ball up and away, allow the big receivers to use their body and keep it away from them. Watching Nick Davila, you're a baseball fan. Remember the Braves back in the mid 90s? Tommy Glavin, not real big, not the real strong arm, but always put it in the right place. Nick Davila plays that way to me. Doesn't look great before the game, but looks excellent during it. There you go, Dayton mess again, Paul. You're the one who said way we were back 40. in the 90s. <laughs> Jacksonville defense coming up big right there. Putting Davila on his back on the 15 yard line. That's Justin Parrish, number nine, with the sack. And it looked like Arizona was trying to set up one of those tight end screens here. That's why the pressure is in on Davila so quickly. But unfortunately, the linebacker did a great job of covering the screen guy. Davila had to pull it back down. And obviously takes a little bit of a hit there, but uh, did a nice job of not trying to force anything. Take a sack, line up for another down. You're supposed to at least slow the defense down on that screen, right? <laughs> if you're a, a quarterback, you'd like to think that that was, uh, that was the goal. Second down, 20. Penalty flags down. A little extracurricular activity between Justin Parrish and a couple of Arizona Rattlers there. Before the snap, encroachment, defense number 77. Five yards, still second down. Just got a lot of pressure, just get the sack, get the momentum on their, their side. They turn it right back over with, you know, a penalty before the snap that really didn't need to happen, but they had the momentum probably trying to get in there to get to Davila again, try to build on that a little bit, but uh, now puts them back in a little better shape, still got 15 yards to go. Second drive of the game for the Arizona Rattlers. First one ended in a touchdown. This is second down 15, and that's Davila. And that is a drop pass. It was left behind him, a ball that Gathers could have caught. Passing Bringing up third incomplete. down and 15. Third down. Hey, Nick Davila, 71%, Kurt, to go along with 107 more touchdowns. Then interceptions. It's just like a video game when you talk about these two quarterbacks and what they've accomplished this year. 117 three touchdowns and just three 10 three interceptions. 70% completion. I mean, it's amazing. I know it's a throwing league. I know it's designed for the offense, but you've got to be playing good football to put up those kind of numbers. Got to be good here on third down and 15. Jacksonville defense comes in, and Davila just kind of underhand flips that one. Used to see Archie Manning. Now I'm really dating ourselves. Make passes like that in NFL films. Bringing up fourth down 15. And the one thing when you talk about arena football, you don't see guys that get a lot of stats. Their stat numbers aren't huge, but when you talk to coaches, so much of this game is not about getting the quarterback down, but forcing the quarterback to make decisions before he wants to. You see there, just tremendous pressure. Nick Davila didn't have a chance. Throw away is almost as good of a sack in this kind of situation. Coaches always talk about defensive stops and how they're like gold. If the Jacksonville defense could come up with a stop on drive number two. Here they are, fourth and 15. Going to have a late flag for penalty. Late flag for pass interference on Mishai Robinson. It almost looked like Mishai had a little pass interference. Pass interference. Defense number one. Ten yards from the previous spot. Automatic. It almost looked like Mishai bumped him first. The flag didn't come out. And then when the ball actually got there, maybe he bumped him again. And so they're calling the second part of this play. Ball gets there. It looks like it's pretty good defense on the top of the route. But there was a bump before that. Flag didn't come out at that point in time. Not really sure what the official saw there. Ty goes to the offense, right, Phil? <laughs> in my book, Ty always goes to the offense. Real good chance for Jacksonville to come up with a stop there on fourth and 15. Penalty allows the drive to continue for Arizona. First and 10 on the 20. Three steps. Puts it right on his man, Terry Reed. Touchdown, Rattlers. 20 yards. Davila to Reed. I 
judges continue to be really impressed at the early going with the anticipation shown by Nick Davila. That's one thing that I think the game has changed a little bit over the years, that back in the past it was more about holding the ball, trying to get that big play down the field. But the one thing you'll see with both of these quarterbacks, they do a tremendous job of hitting their back foot and allowing their receivers to come out of a break, put the ball on them, and allow them to make a play after the catch. And so these guys have been extremely impressive. The reason why they're teams, and they've had so much success this season. Two for two on the extra points. Arizona Rattlers and Nick Davila, the MVP, comes out hot. The Rattlers lead by eight. Throughout the season, the AFL is proud to welcome National Guard servicemen and women along with their families to enjoy arena football games across the nation. Easy to enjoy this one. It is Arena Bowl 24, and the Arizona Rattlers, the number one seed in the AFL, looking exactly like you should be the number one seed. Two possessions, two touchdowns, and a 14-6 lead. Well, this is arena football. You expect a lot of action. You expect a lot of plays. But the one thing that you notice, too, is the little things in this game pay, can pay big dividends. You know, the, li the little movement penalties on the extra point. That costs them a point. That situation, they're in a fourth and long situation. Pass interference gives them another shot to get in the end zone. So the little things in this game can pay huge dividends for those teams. Here comes Jeff Hewley already with a couple of return touchdowns in the postseason. There is a penalty marker down on the Jacksonville 22. Nice return. We shall see momentarily if it stands. During the return, holding on the return team number nine. Ten yards from the spot of the foul, first down. Number nine is Justin Parrish. Let's check in with Anthony Heron. And I'm with Nick Davila. Nick, Jacksonville known for playing that man coverage. Looks like you're attacking Misha Robinson, their best DB. What have you seen so far? Well, you know, they're doing a, they've uh, done a good job all year playing man, you know. So that's one thing we wanted to attack early. And, uh, you know, they're going to mix up some zones, and we got to be ready to just take care of the football and take what they give us as a quarterback. And the size of your couple of your wide receivers, 6'2", six, 6'3", six, does that help you at all as a QB? Yeah, you know, uh, when you got guys that, that are that tall in a DB that's kind of short, you know, even if they're covered, you can throw it up and they can make a play on it because they're taller. So that's what we, we're trying to do. All right, thanks a lot, Nick. Paul. Nick, Anthony, thank you very much. And uh, Aaron Garcia complete to Jeff Hewley for 22 yards. And Garcia now two for two with one touchdown and 63 yards already tonight. And you see those quick throws. I asked Aaron what he learned over the years. In 17 years, what's he learned about the game? And the one thing he said is his body can't take the hits anymore. So he doesn't try to hold the ball in the pocket as much. He loves doing those quick little screens, the quick tosses, get the ball out of his hands and let his playmakers make plays for him. Playmaker right there is the fullback, Kirby Griffin, out to the 16-yard line. Tackle made by Marquise Floyd. And we have the advantage tonight of having Mike on the quarterback and the coaches. We will take a listen into the quarterbacks calling the plays and also getting the plays from the sideline. So wide to right trip. Don't jump. 51, Iowa pass on three. He said Aaron doesn't like to take the hits anymore. Kurt, he was sacked only 11 times this year, the fewest in the AFL. And partly because of a great offensive line, partly because of Aaron calling his own plays, getting the ball out of his hands. Could be a free play right here, standing tall and firing, and that is intercepted. Now, we do have a penalty marker on the 17-yard line, and I believe the Rattlers had a head start. Offside, defense number 98. Five yards from the previous spot, replay, second down. That's just one of those savvy veteran moves. He knows he gets Arizona to jump off sides. He knows he's got a free play. Probably didn't have his guys open as he wanted to, but he said, hey, I'm going to take a shot. I'm going to put the ball up. Worst that can happen is intercepted, but we get the ball back. So smart move by Aaron Garcia to see the flag, see the movement, and take a shot. Bonus five yards, creating second down and one, and also erasing that interception. Ball on the 11-yard line. Garcia quickly to Jerron Harvey across the strike. Six more points, Jacksonville. Jerron Harvey is the Sharks' compliment to Jason Gathers, the big, long receiver that they love to use in the red zone. They love to get it on his body and allow him to run over those smaller defenders. You see here just a quick little hitch route, get the ball in his hands, and make a little DB try to tackle that big frame. Jerron Harvey, incredible. 
touchdown receiving postseason. He has eight catches in two plus games. Six of those eight going for touchdowns. Gabazzoli is now 0 for 2 on the extra points. And the Arizona lead remains at 2. Aaron Garcia has a pair of touchdown passes. He's got a gain as expected. Arizona Rattler is leading in the first quarter 14 to 12. Let's jump on the sideline with Ari Wolf. Hey Coach Moss, Coach, you guys had to overcome a lot of adversity. The short week, the travel across the country. How do you feel your teams responded so far? Well, like I thought they would. You know, we uh, we just let their bodies rest as much as we could and got them ready to play mentally. And, uh, you know, right so far they're holding up. Okay, thanks, Coach. Yep. All right, Paul. All right, thank you very much. And uh, Jacksonville certainly sticking right with Arizona, playing just as well, minus a couple of missed extra points. You know, a couple little things, but it is pretty amazing. you got to remember that this Jacksonville team just played on Monday night. Have to come all the way across the country for a Friday night game. So, could be a lot of fatigue, but Coach said a lot of what he wanted to do was get his team out of here early, keep that momentum on their side, try not to wear these guys out. Virgil Gray with a nice return, and he fumbled the football. The Jacksonville Sharks have recovered. The kicker, Capazzoli. Make up for those two missed extra points by Carson and that fumble. And those are great. He's such a huge part of this Arizona Rattler team. He's been tremendous on returns, leads the league in return yards, does a great job here with his speed, his burst, cutting back across the grain. It looks like he might go for six. A great job there of reaching and stripping the ball out. And like you said, the kicker, kicker coming up with a big play, missing those extra points, wanted to redeem himself a little bit. I'd say he did it right there. All right, ball given right back to Aaron Garcia. Garcia right now, perfect three for three and two touchdowns. Now four for four with a first down toss to Jomo Wilson, who is into Arizona territory. Tackle made by Marquise Floyd. This offensive line for Jacksonville has just been so impressive this year. That you got a 40-year-old quarterback, you want to keep him off of his back. Season experience knows what he's doing. If you give him time, he's going to put up the numbers like he did this year. And this offensive line has done a tremendous job of allowing him to see down the field, get back to his second and third reads, and it's been a big part of why they've had so much success and the best offense in the league. He was sacks 11. Garcia off his back foot. That's Jeff Hewley. Bounces off a tackle inside the 10 yard line. Gain of 14. Let's check in with Ari Wolf. All right, Marco, in arena football, eight on eight special teams. The kicker's got to be physical. Tell me about how you got in there to get the recovery. Hey, man, I missed that extra point. I knew I had to do something to help my team out. That's what we're all about all year. It's all going out there giving 110%. I saw an opportunity to get that ball, and I dove on it. Thank God was on my side. All right, thanks, Marco. Thanks, Dave. Paul? He says, thank goodness, a chance to do something positive. You heard it. You knew that that extra point was in his head the whole time, so he's probably feeling pretty good right now. Jomo Wilson was thinking about making a sprint for that stripe and forgot to catch the football. It'll be second down and ten. That's a play that Aaron Garcia has taken from way back when he played with the Iowa Barnstormers, way back around the time when I played, this old guy played. But yeah. They love to see if the DBs are playing soft. They like to take the ball with a quick hitter, get it in their hands, and let them catch the ball on the run. That's the end of the first quarter. First quarter of Arena Bowl 24 is in the books. Two touchdowns by each team and two missed extra points. And that's where it stands heading into quarter number two. 14-12, Arizona on top. Number one and number two seeds in the AFL. Number one and number two scoring offenses. So no surprise the offenses have not been stopped yet. Aaron Garcia's first Arena Bowl, his first pass. A touchdown connection to Jomo Wilson. It's 14-12 as... Garcia just gets rid of it now. Penalty flag down. Antaj Hawthorne, I think, going to get cited for a late hit on Aaron Garcia. Personal foul, roughing the passer number 77 defense, picking the quarterback up and dumping him. Half the distance to the goal, automatic first down. This was a matchup we were going to watch going into this game. Mike Mabry, really just his first game with the Sharks against Antaj Hawthorne, who's a tremendous pass rusher. You see in this situation, great job, great pass rush. 
he just picked him up there a little bit drove and kind of drove him into the ground, and that's what caused the flag. Really a great move on his part until he picked him up and drove him into the turf. Yeah, it wasn't so much late as it was a little more vicious. Finished yeah. a little stronger than he needed to. First down and goal from the five. Garcia flips it out to Harvey. To the one-yard line. Tackle made by Tyree Glassburn. And you're starting to see a theme. A lot of times you see in the NFL that these teams want to go get these big wide receivers because when they get down to the red zone, it creates matchup problems for the other team. The same thing holds true here in the AFL, is that they're trying to get these big time receivers, get the ball into their hands, use their bodies when they get close to the end zone. Wide run, 43 yards on one. Jerron Harvey's touchdown percentage going down with plays like that. Now with nine catches, six touchdowns. Still pretty good. Second down goal from the one-yard line. DeMarco Simmons is stuffed. Gets back to the line of scrimmage. There is a penalty marker on the four-yard line. Defense number 19. Half the distance to the goal. Replay second down. Number 19 is Marquise Floyd. You don't see offsides very often. It's on the defensive backs in this league, which when you get down tight, everybody's expecting a running play. You see him just off the edge here. More of a little blitz situation, which they're not really allowed to do in arena football. So he was just trying to guess they were going to go run in that situation, but just jumped a little bit early. Second and goal inside the one. Garcia does not get the snap. Kurt just mentioned his center tonight, Mabry, the first time he's played all season. And the Sharks find a way to get back on that one. Very fortunate. Like you said, it's been a short week for the Sharks anyways. They have to bring in a new center, get him up to speed on the playbook, but also get him comfortable in the center snap situation. So it's something we wanted to keep our eye on. They're fortunate in this situation. They have a mishap, but they get the ball back. Mabry going to change his gloves, trying to avoid a situation like that in the future. Had a nice, nice career in the AFL, but has not played football since playing in the UFL last season. Thirty goal inside the one. Kirby Griffin putting his head down. Second effort. Ball's out. Sharks recover. That's Jomo Wilson who recovered in the end zone. He thinks he scored a touchdown. The ball was fumbled by the running back, went into the end zone, and was recovered by his teammate. It is a touchdown. Wow, a couple big breaks for the Shark. They get the turnover. They're bringing it down. Almost a chance with two turnovers the other direction. They recover the first one. The game Here's the situation. A couple great hits there. The Kevin McCullough. Jumbo Wilson the game clock in clear. the right situation, right, right place at the right time. 12.35. Two fumbles in a row, and the Sharks jump on both of them. Jomo Wilson turning that second fumble into six points. Capazzoli has not made an extra point yet. That one is close to perfect. So he has a made extra point and a recovered fumble. The kicker's coming around for the Sharks. Jackson will lead by five. We are back at the U.S. Airways Center here in Arizona. And I'm joined now by the Army National Guard representative specialist, David Solario. And you have just returned from a tour just about 16 days ago. So what is that process like where you're over there serving our country and now you're getting to be here for Arena Bowl 24? Is that exciting at all? It's very exciting, especially being in my hometown again and seeing the Rattlers uh, fighting for first place in the championship Arena Bowl. So very exciting. It's a, a great transition. Uh, welcome to With Open Hands. And you actually told me this isn't the first arena football game you've been to. So where have you been to games before? And what do you think about AFL action? I've always been supporting the Rattlers. Uh, this is my hometown again. And uh, this is where I want to stay. Wherever I may uh, be called to deploy, I always plan to return back home where I am uh, accepted uh, by, with open hands by all the locals here. Well, Specialist Lara, we certainly appreciate the service that you and all the brave men and women give from the Army National Guard. Thank you very much, and it's a pleasure. Paul. Anthony, thank you very much. Virgil Gray had a hard time getting that one and just gets out to the two-yard line. Tackled by LaRoncha Jackson. Penalty marker is down on the five-yard line. Return. 
Holding, number 15 of the return team, takedown. Half the distance to the goal from the end of the run, first down. As I mentioned earlier, Paul, that Arizona doesn't get an opportunity to practice in here very often. Don't get a chance to practice their special teams very often. You see it causing a few problems early. Trouble handling the first kickoff. Second one, obviously, they have the fumble. First one was a good return. That one, you see it hit the iron. A little tough for Virgil Gray to grab a hold of it. So you wonder if the chance, the ability of not being able to catch it off the net and work off the nets is affecting them a little bit tonight. Rattlers trailing for the first time. And that's just a drop by Trandon Harvey to bring up second down 10. All right, here we go. Here we go. Let's go. Uh, X left. Yeah. X right. Zoom. Big three. Uh, uh, big trip, uh, no. Hey, hey. Left up. X zoom. Three dig nine. Here we go. Left up. X zoom. Three dig nine. I don't want it. his back foot under heavy pressure credit that incompletion to the Jacksonville pass rush and it's now third down and ten and he, here's what we're talking about in arena football grabbing. league is that you're trying to push the, the middle of the pocket down. not always about getting to the quarterback and bringing him down but pushing it up the middle where he can't step in and make those big plays down the field and Nick Davila kind of a, a rough streak right now or a rough patch only connecting on one of his last five passes. Third down and ten from just inside his own one yard line. Three steps, and that's a nice catch. The veteran, Chris Jackson. Jackson on the coverage as well, the Wache Jackson, but that is an Arizona gain of 16 on third and ten. And this is one way to beat the pressure. Three steps, put your back foot in the ground, let the ball go. That's something that you're going to see a lot from these two teams. They're not going to allow that defensive pressure to cause them to make bad plays. So they're going to get back, hit the foot, their foot in the ground, get the ball out to these receivers. First down and 10 from their own 17. Davila with time, quickly just gets it out to Jason Gathers. Gain of seven. Here. Read, go. Read. Well, V short, A, re-smash. There you go. Here we go. Left, V short, A, re-smash. I want it. I heard smash there, Kurt. I think this is one of those plays they're going to try to push it down the field if they can, but you see the three and the one, they're going to have guys underneath in case he doesn't have the big play. Stepping up, has room to run, and has an Arizona first down into Jacksonville territory. That's one of those things that Nick Davila has done so well this year is that he gets a little bit of pressure. He doesn't force anything. He's got the ability to run. He's got the ability to throw it away, throw the check down. Really a nice job here. He felt the pressure up the gut, saw a hole, takes it for what he can get, gets down, doesn't take that extra hit. Nice job by Davila there. Davila keeping it himself, picking up nine yards, and the Arizona first down to present first down and 10 from the 18. Off his back foot. Mishai Robinson had the best chance to catch that one. Wow, what a tremendous break by Mishai Robinson. We heard from his coach all year, or all the week long, is that he's so good at reading the receivers. He's able to see when they break down, when they make a little bit of lean. You see in this situation here that he beats the receiver to the spot. He sees him start to make his move inside and lean back to the outside. Mishai breaks, has his hand on the ball, just wasn't able to come down with it. Davila wanted Kerry Reed. Player out of Michigan State. Reed already has a touchdown reception tonight. Davila waiting and waiting for Gathers to come open. Finally does. And that is another Arizona first down, a gain of 14. I really like what they've done. You know, he, he takes that hit early, trying to make the big play down the field. They come back, short play after short play. He gets the run. They try to take that shot to the end zone, almost gets intercepted. What do they right, do right away? They come back and say, hey, we're just going to take another short one underneath. We're going to continue to move the ball, not try to do too much. It was a big key for them and Coach Guy coming into this game. Yeah, there's the number one postseason receiver in the two games so far for Arizona with just under 200 yards receiving. Davila floats it in and touchdown Chris Jackson.
is a tremendous play by a veteran receiver. He ran up there, looked like he was just going to run a little bit of a hitch route. Dava was looking for him. He was covered. He just broke to the back of the end zone. Davila saw him did a great job of just dropping it over the top. But that was a veteran saying, hey, I'm not open here. Find the open spot. Find my quarterback's eyes. Chris, Chris Jackson did it as well as anybody right there. A nice veteran throw also by, Kurt, uh, by Davila. He looked one way, came back the other, and then had to wait for Jackson to come open in that second or third hole in the back of the end zone. Arizona comes back, retakes the lead. The Rattlers at home in Arena Bowl 24 by two. Welcome back to Arena Bowl 24. Right now, Arizona with a two-point lead. Now, I'm here with Mike Mayberry. Now, Mike, you were all arena back in 2008, but you haven't played arena ball since then. Coach Moss called you on Monday. You joined the team on Wednesday. Talk about the challenge of jumping right back into it. Well, you know, I've been playing in the outdoor games for the last three years. And yeah, arena football in the, in the outdoor game is a totally different game. It's, it's a different intensity. It's a whole, I mean, it's been a, a little bit of a challenge, but I'm starting to get back in the swing of things. You know, it, you know I got here on Wednesday, walked through on Thursday, on the field on Friday. So we're, we're just we're trying to work through it. Talk to me about on the goal line where you guys had the fumbled exchange with you and Aaron Garcia. What did you guys talk about when you came off the field? I was just trying to get a little bit lower than usual. And, you know, me and Aaron have never worked on that. And it was definitely on me. It's something I got to, you know, communicate with him, you know, to get that fixed. If we got it fixed. It won't happen again. Okay. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, George. All right, Paul, back to you. Randy Digg had been the center for Jacksonville all season. And, Kurt, can you imagine having to think about taking the snap in the championship game for the first time of the year? Well, so many things to think about, you know, playing in an arena bowl, a short week, getting preparation on, on the number one team in the league, and then to have to realize, oh, wait, my starting center isn't there. I got to work on snaps. I got to teach him protections. Hung up oh, and by the, the way, we got a guy named and House Hawthorne on the other line. side of the ball First that down. might be the best nose tackle in the league. So a lot of extra things thrown on this, uh, this Shark team coming into a short week and in this arena bowl. Arizona had trailed just for a few moments there. Jacksonville took the lead at 19-14 for the very first time of the evening. Nick Dobbley, you see him right there, taking a rest. Earned that rest, leads his team back into a two-point lead. 6.47 left and counting, and here comes Aaron Garcia. Looking left, back to his right. Can't throw it any better than that. Jeff Hewley would like to have that chance back. And we talk so often about the offense in arena football, but so much of the first half in arena football is really just trying to steal possession. You expect to score every time out. So you're trying to get a steal of a possession at some point in time. You saw Coach Moss defer, knowing he was going to have the ball coming out in the second half. And he sees up to this point, it's back and forth, back and forth. But the Sharks were able to get that steal of possession on that special teams play. We'll see how that plays out these last six minutes of the first half. Garcia, six out of nine, 101 yards, two touchdowns, no picks. And he's now 7 for 10, a first down strike to Jomo Wilson. Virgil Gray on the coverage, but that's a Jacksonville gain of 13. Here's a little look at the inside battle between Mabry and Hawthorne. You know, it's going to be something that we're going to watch all night. You know, like Mabry said, he's been playing the other game on the big field for the past three years. And it's a whole different deal when you're in close confines like this in arena football, that you don't have a lot of room for air in this situation. But up to this point, I think he's held up pretty well. Jeff Hewley in high motion, the lone receiver for Garcia to his right. And that's exactly where he's looking, and Hewley is wide open. Touchdown, Sharks. And this is what Aaron was talking about coming in this week. You take what they can give you. You set up the short stuff. You continue to take it. You continue to take it. And then in this situation, you see just a little hitch, a little hook, and go. In this situation, he's coming back, taking a hard look at Jeff Hewley on the outside, waiting for him to make that double move. Splits the defenders and makes this easy. It's about as easy as they come in arena football when you can just lay it up over the top like that. Cap is only one out of three so far on extra points, and he is now 50%. Jacksonville leads once again by five. Garcia has three touchdown passes tonight to Wilson, to Harvey, and that one to Hewlett. Aaron Garcia now has three touchdown passes, and the Jacksonville Sharks once again had a five-point lead. 440 left of the second quarter. Arena Bowl 24.
Paul Burmeister and Kurt Warner in the booth. Anthony Heron, Ari Wolf on the sidelines. And the two best teams of the last 20 weeks on the field battling it out for the right to be called AFL Champions 2011. This Arizona defense has been so stingy in the playoffs, only giving up about 40 points a game. So I'm kind of surprised that Jacksonville's been able to come in here and get a couple quick strikes on this defense. Virgil Gray, top kick return man in the AFL in the regular season. For the second time tonight, fumbles, and the Jacksonville Sharks thought they had it. The runner was ruled down by contact prior to the ball coming loose. Okay, now First each... Down. Each coach has a red flag and can challenge can challenge a play so it can be looked at closer. Instant replay. Something we always talk about is that when you get wrapped up, you got to know when to go down because there's guys coming from all angles. It looked like in that situation, Virgil Gay, Gray was trying to get out of that last tackle and, and in from behind, great job of coming in and stripping the football. Okay, Les Moss, to the surprise of no one, fires that red flag. Challenging the ruling on the play of the runner being down prior to the ball coming loose. Each coach can challenge one time per half. If he wins that challenge, does not get another. If he loses the challenge, loses a timeout. So what we get to do now is take a listen to Sean Hockley. Talk to our truck, our producer Mark Teitelman. You also get to see exactly what he sees on that replay monitor. How are you, gentlemen? All right, let's see what we got. We're looking for a body part. We're looking for a body part, a knee, an elbow, something other than a hand hitting the ground prior to the ball coming loose. The ruling on the field was that the ball came out prior to something hitting the ground. Okay, from that angle, it looks pretty clear. Can you have another angle? When number 20 swipes at the ball, it looks as though the ball comes out prior to that right knee hitting the ground. Okay, again, same thing there. Do you have anything from behind? Okay, do you have anything else from behind? Show me the first angle one more time, this one. Slow-mo, please. Here we go, the arm comes down, the ball's out prior to the knee hitting the ground. We're gonna have a fumble, the call's gonna be reversed. Jacksonville's gonna have the ball, stop it where the player gains possession. Because what we have here is an immediate recovery of a Jacksonville player. So you can see Jacksonville immediately recovers the ball. We're going to give him the ball right there at the eight-yard line. Thank you very much for the great shots, gentlemen. Well, you heard it from Sean Hockley. Jacksonville Sharks going to have the ball. It's fun to listen in on what he's Isn't looking it? for, all the different angles, what exactly when he was coming in, he's talking about we're looking for something besides a hand that touches before the ball comes out. So really neat the look inside, behind the, the scenes of, of a replay. Prior to his right knee hitting the ground. Therefore, the ruling on the field is reversed. Jacksonville will take over possession at the eight-yard line because they had a clear recovery of the loose ball after the whistle. First down, Jacksonville. It's a good challenge by Les Moss. No more challenges remaining in the half. And it was and an outstanding special out. teams play curd by number 20, Jerry Brown, right there. It was an outstanding play by Jerry Brown. Did exactly what he should have. Virgil Gray was stood up. He knew that he didn't have to chase him down. He could go for the ball in that situation. You hate to see those kind of turnovers as a coach because Virgil Gray is trying to break out of that tackle and make a big play. But unfortunately, in doing that, left the ball exposed and the turnover. So Virgil Gray led the AFL with five kick return touchdowns in the regular season. Already tonight, two fumbles on kick returns. And the Sharks have recovered both fumbles. First and goal from the seventh. Garcia backpedaling off his back foot finds Jerron Harvey to the five-yard line. And the tackle made by Vince Hall. That's a gain of three. This is something Aaron Garcia has done so well for all of his years in arena football. He's got the ability to use his feet, the athletic ability to move and throw on the run. Not a big scrambler, but he does a tremendous job there of just buying himself a little bit of time, knowing he had enough arm strength to get enough behind it to get the ball to Jerron Harvey. Garcia, a strong first half right now. Nine out of 12 for a buck 49, three touchdowns and no interceptions. This is Kirby Griffin, toss sweep left side. He didn't quite get in. That's Virgil Gray, the man who fumbled the ball, making the tackle. And that's a gain of four. 
and talking to Aaron that he, he calls his own plays, which is kind of a, a throwback arena game. Used to be the two-way player. Now you've got a number of quarterbacks that call their own play. But I ask him, one of the challenges to that is that actually taking the ball out of your hand and, and pitching it to somebody. Because in this game, you want to have the ball, you want to throw it around. And he said that is one of the challenges, but he makes sure that he is conscious of that so that he can keep the teams off balance. Jamarco Simmons easily in for the sharp touchdown from one yard out. Jamarco Simmons is kind of their every down guy. They, they use him to do so many different things. You saw on the play before, they, they spread him out wide. He was the lead blocker. They love to use his big body in the red zone, and they love to hand the ball to him. He's got such a big frame, big body, that they say he's really difficult to stop when they get inside in the red zone. It's 6'3", 235. Doubles as a big wide out and a nice size fullback slash running back. Three plays, eight yards, special teams blunder. We'll see what Capazzoli can do with it. Oh, my goodness. Two-point conversion, exactly how you draw it up. It's one of those plays you grab the ball, you look around, and you throw it to somebody in your color, but there was a whole bunch of guys in white there. I'm not sure he was legal or not, but uh, but it worked out. Vladimir Richard with an unexpected two points. So how about the night of Capizoli? The team who caught the pass was an ineligible receiver who did not report. An eligible receiver downfield. The try is no good and is not replayed. It was fun while it lasted. It was fun. And like I said, as a kicker, you're just looking for somebody in your color and you're throwing it up. And uh, you were hoping that they would miss the number on it, but unfortunately didn't play out for the Sharks. And let's throw it down to Ari. All right, Coach Moss, hold on a second. <laughs> Paul Coach is fired up right now, but here's the situation. He wasn't entirely convinced that he should go for the challenge, and then when I got a chance to talk to him, I'll let him tell you. Here he is. Coach, you took a few seconds before the challenge. What convinced you to go ahead and challenge in that situation? Players, I didn't see it. The player that actually made the play came over and said, Coach, he was going down. I hooked it out. It came out before. That was Jerry Brown. Coach, so many twists and turns in arena football. It seems that you guys have gotten some good breaks in the first half. Would you agree with that so far? Yeah, we have, but we got to keep playing. Obviously, this is a hostile environment. That's the record the league we're playing against, so it's going to be a full 60-minute game. All right, thanks for the time, Coach. All right, Paul, back up to you, bud. So Jerry Brown coming over after he stripped the ball and recovered it and said, Coach, I made a heck of a play. Well, it's funny, I've heard a lot of players come over to coaches and say, hey, coach, I guarantee you I had two yeah, feet right. in. I guarantee you that I caught that ball. So you're never quite sure when a player comes over and tells you that. But Jerry Brown, you know, he was heads up. He went over to the coach and guaranteed the coach that the ball came out, turned into a great challenge. It's somewhat ironic that the Arizona Rattlers, as we pointed out, number one in the AFL turnover margin at plus 33, 13 better. Then Jacksonville, well, right now, Jacksonville, 13 points off Rattler turnovers. And Arizona, zero points off the Shark turnovers. When you talk so much about all three phases of the game, Paul, the we talked about the railing will be placed at the five yard line, first down. We talked about the defensive players. We know about the two explosive offense, but it's amazing. Most of the miscues tonight have come on special teams. The two fumbles, the mixed extra points, the fumbled snap on that last extra point. So it's funny that special teams is starting to play a huge role in this game tonight. So Nick Davila has not been in this situation very often for trailing by 11 inside of two minutes in the first half. Three steps just doing what he does. Throwing on time with accuracy to Chris Jackson. Nishai Robinson with the coverage, but that's a gain of 20. Anthony Heron going to hang around on the sideline there and try to help us with a play call. Anthony, what do you got? The head coach of the Rattlers also called the offensive plays. Kevin, what are you looking for? Well, we're going to go run hitches right here, and then we're going to run plus one. We're going to line right back up and run another play. Trying to hurry up so they can get that two for one, guys. Nick Davila, 11 for 17 for 135 right now. Off his back foot, we have the penalty marker down to the 20-yard line. Offense number 55. That penalty's declined. Second down. And we're going to check in one more time with Anthony Heron as soon as Coach Guy calls the play and sends Nick Davila running out to the huddle. 
Here we go. And the benefit was at least that the play clock did stop. Kevin? We're going 60 hot tee shoot. Here we go. I, I can't. They get end zone as soon as possible, Paul. You're supposed to know what 60 hot means. Little jump off to Odie Armstrong, the fullback. Tackle made by Terrence Smith. Rattler gain of seven. And you heard Anthony mention the two for one. You're always trying to be the last team to score at the half and get that advantage going into halftime. Clock stops inside of one minute. It does so with Jacksonville leading by 11. The National Guard is proud to serve as a partner with the Arena Football League. Congratulations to the Arizona Rattlers and Jacksonville Sharks on a great 2011 season. In the booth, Paul Burmeister and Kurt Warner and Kurt... Arizona Rattlers at home right now, trailing by 11 and inside of Jacksonville territory. We hear so much about the final minute strategy. What is the strategy right now of Arizona? Well, you know, the big key is, you heard Anthony mention the two for one. You know, what Arizona's trying to do right now is get in the end zone really quickly, kick it off. It's okay if, if uh, the Sharks score, then they want to come back and get that last score before they go into halftime because you're always trying to steal possessions like we talked about before. You know that the Sharks are getting the ball out at the second half. They, they deferred it in the first half saying, hey, no matter what happens, we know we're going to get that first possession in the second half. So both teams are trying to fight right now with that clock to say, okay, I want to be the last team to score. I can steal a possession. If you're Jacksonville, you say, I steal a possession, and I get the ball coming out of the half. If you're Arizona, you're trying to hold them off so that you don't have two possession difference here with 59 seconds to go. Arizona trailing by 11. Special teams blunders, two fumbles. Really standing in the way, off his back foot. That's a touchdown strike to Chris Jackson. It's exactly what we were talking about, Paul. They wanted to get the ball in the end zone quick. A little double move by Chris Jackson there. Great job by Davila to hold in the pocket and make that throw. So now they got 54 seconds. Even if the Sharks come out here and score quickly, they're probably going to have one more chance to be that last team to score this half. 18 yards, Davila to Jackson, and what a fantastic signing. You lose a Rod Windsor, you go out and get a Chris Jackson, the 2000 Offensive Rookie of the Year in the AFL, the 2003 Offensive Player of the Year. Quality veteran who can clearly still play. Jacksonville lead cut to four now. And just really trying to take advantage of Mishai Robinson's aggressiveness. He made a little move to the corner, stuck his foot in the ground, and came back across the middle. Just a great job, like I said, by Davila holding in the pocket and being able to get enough on the ball to get it in the end zone. Chris Jackson playing the final two games of the regular season after Rod Windsor goes back to the National Football League and been a big part here of the successful postseason of the Arizona Rattlers. Let's throw it down to Anthony Heron. And let's talk strategy here in the final minute, Coach. Are you thinking onside kick in this scenario? Yeah, absolutely. We want to get the last possession of the half. And uh, let's see if we can come up with a stop. We still got a three timeout. And uh, you know, even if they score, we're going to have time to go back down and score again for halftime. We'll see what happens. And losing a couple of possessions on special teams will make it doubly important to try to steal one back. Yeah, we got to steal one back. We fumbled twice on, on special teams. We got to get a possession back here. Thanks, Coach. Paul? All right, Anthony. Coming up at the halftime break, AFL Commissioner Jerry Kurz will announce the AFL Hall of Fame class of 2011, plus NFL preseason highlights and updates. All coming up at halftime, which is 54 seconds away. Stay tuned. Nick Davila, 13 out of 20, three touchdowns and no picks. That's an onside kick, and that is a great special teams play by the fullback, Kirby Griffin. That was not an easy one to come down with. We do have two penalty markers on the field. Number three of the kicking team did not allow the receiver to safely return to the ground prior to hitting him. This is kick catching interference on the kicking team. Half the distance to the goal, Jacksonville first down. What do you think of that strategy, Kurt? In a normal situation, you know, you would worry about having a penalty in a situation like that. But 
right here it doesn't really matter you really want Jacksonville to be as close to the end zone as they can possibly be at this point because you want them to score quickly if they score quickly it gives you plenty of time to be able to come down use the clock manage things so you get that last possession so in a normal situation a special teams coach might be angry in this situation I don't think he's too upset on the sideline Garcia first and goal from the five Kirby Griffin comes down with the onside kick and now takes it just inside the four yard line tackle made by Marcus Pittman timeout Arizona their first of the half 30 second timeout I thought it was interesting we were talking to the coaches this week about that strategy about the end of the first half strategy and you know we were talking to coach Moss of the Sharks and he even said at one point he said we'll kick an onside kick in that situation but I'll tell my kicker don't kick the ball 10 yards make sure it stays within that 10 yards we want the other team to get possession and we want them to score which I thought was interesting most of the times you think of onside kicks you're trying to get that ball back and steal the possession that? that way had you ever heard of that I, I had never heard of that before I but I, it was interesting and it made sense to me is hey we'll give them the ball as close to the end zone as possible similar to this situation let them score because the only thing we're worried about is being the last one to put points on the board before that clock hits double zero 49 seconds remaining Jacksonville leading by four second down and goal from the three Garcia to Harvey. Arizona defense comes up with a big stop. Vince Hill. The first of many rattlers there. Two penalty markers on the field. One of the four yard line and one in the end zone. After the play was over, personal foul, unnecessary roughness number 19, defense. Hopkins to the goal, automatic first down. Because it was a dead ball foul, no time will be added to the clock. And number 19 is Marquise Floyd. So an interesting strategy here, because if you're Arizona, you kind of want to let the Sharks score so you get the ball back. If you're the Sharks, you're throwing these little dump passes, trying to get it in the end zone, but at the same time, trying to use as much time as you possibly can. So it's just an interesting play of strategy at this point. So on number 19. Coming in there at the end of the play, getting that penalty, Marquise Floyd. So it is now first and goal from the two. Kirby Griffin did not get the pitch. The Arizona Rattlers did. Antaj Hawthorne, the nose tackle. And that strategy worked out to perfection. Kick the onside kick, trying to steal a possession. In this situation, you almost steal two. You get the fumble recovery. Jacksonville does not score, and you still get the chance to be the last one to put points on the board and even take the lead going into halftime. It's almost like Kirby Griffin was expecting a handoff, and normally you don't see a pitch, and you know this as well as anybody, you don't see a pitch from half a yard away. You're right. It was great pressure that it was almost like he saw the pressure coming out of the corner of his eye, took his eye off the ball, and the fumble was created. Now Davila goes down in the end zone, can get back up, and he does, and fires a strike. Jason Gathers almost came up with it. Nice job. Davila kind of recovering there and avoiding disaster. Over his own offensive lineman, then got really up heads up play. Pass. Second down. Really heads up play by Davila there. To go down would have been easy just to sit there and wait for somebody to come touch you. But to get up, even though they didn't get the completion, just to get up and get the ball out of there so they can line up and take another snap and not get a safety in that situation. There you go. That's that. That's you. Paul, I want it. Davila completes to Kerry Reed. Mishai Robinson there. Reed wisely getting the ball out of bounds, so the clock stops with 30 seconds left. Gain of nine. Listen, let's go. Right up, X soon. One more, one plus one. Here we go. Hey, let's go. Hey, hey, hey. Right up, X zoom. One more, one plus one. I want X. Third down and one. Davila, Jackson, first down Arizona. Mishai Robinson with the tackle. Gain of six. 
Interesting aspect of arena football. Timeout. On the big field, Arizona. 30 seconds second is not very half. long. You're rushing up seconds. to the ball. You're Timeout. trying to, to make play after play. Get the ball out of your hands. Get the ball out of bounds. You've seen arena football, 30 seconds is an eternity. They're able to take their time, throw some underneath routes, really use strategy here because they know they're going to have plenty of shots at the end zone with 24 seconds to go. Number one and number two, not only in wins and losses, but very important categories, scoring offense, pass efficiency, turnover margin, sacks allowed one and three, but you get the idea. There's a reason these two teams had the best records in the league. They did everything very, very well. Arizona with one timeout remaining, 24 seconds left. Davila with time. And an open gathers. Arizona now into Jacksonville territory. First down. Tackle made by Loache Jackson. Pick up a 15. Let me see the patience of Arizona. They're saying, hey, I don't have to try to force anything. I got plenty of time. Davila's going back. He takes a peek deep. But he's willing to throw those balls on the sideline, knowing that they can pick up a chunk of yards, get out of bounds, stop the clock. Still plenty of time to take their shots at the end zone. From the Jacksonville 16 with 19 seconds left, first down 10. Arizona trailing by four. Look at the break on the ball by Mishai Robinson. 49 passes broken up this year in the regular season, easily number one in the AFL. It almost looked like there was a little miscommunication. You see Kerry Reed here almost puts his foot in the ground. Looks like he was going to try to run by Robinson, but as he started to go, Davila let the ball go. Robinson <laughs> broke on the ball and had another opportunity, getting his hands on the ball to, to flip those possessions. Now, you would uh, make a mental note of how aggressive number one is with that one, I would imagine. Maybe test him over the top. Davila on second down. Gathers. Touchdown, Rattlers. Sixteen yards, Nick Davila to Jason Gathers. You can just feel the excitement as they stole that possession. They got the fumble recovery. They come down and score with ten seconds to go. Momentum starting to swing. It's a little corner move here. Nothing fancy on that one. A little bit of time up front. The guys up front did a great job. Davila just stood in the pocket, delivered a perfect pass to Gathers. Moments ago, they trailed 32 to 21, and now on top, 35 to 32. Penalty marker down. We'll sort this out. We still have some extracurriculars on the 20-yard line. There is no foul for roughing the kicker. The defender was blocked into the kicker. No foul. 35-32. 10 seconds left. See the little block coming in there. Takes out the kicker low. But as they said, he was kind of pushed into him. Let's go down to Anthony Harris. And Nick Davila, not always known as a fiery competitor, but I've seen you more animated with your team today than maybe I ever have. What's the message you've tried to send? You know, it's, it's, we got to take advantage of the opportunities that Jacksonville's given us. You know, we can't we can't do that with them. And you know, you got a lot of fire somewhere. Thanks a lot, Nick. Paul. All right, Nick Davila, the number one rated quarterback in the Arena Football League, the most valuable player, the second rated quarterback, Aaron Garcia, both playing at a very high level. Now if you're Jacksonville, you're just hoping in this situation to get a nice return and have at least one shot at the end zone. Try to get one of your big receivers to make a play before the half. But Arizona did a great job with that strategy of using the clock, scoring with just a few seconds to go. This is Jeff Hewley playing it off the net. Down at the seven-yard line, a fine special teams tackle made by Vince Hill. Six seconds left, Kurt. You expecting one plays or two? I think they're going to try to get two. I think they're going to throw a quick shot to the out-of-bounds, try to gain a few yards here. You may even see a kick 
half and maybe tie the game going into halftime, knowing that they're going to get the ball out in the second half. But I think you're going to see one quick throw at least to set up field position, and then either a kick or a shot to the end zone. Here's what you called for there, Kurt. A little quick pass to Jamarco Simmons. Picks up a few yards. Six to be exact. Goes out of bounds. Tackle made by Kevin McCullough. Really starting to feel that home field advantage. Yeah. I'd say arena football is back and in great shape here in Arizona. It has been noisy from the start here, Kurt. 5.30 kick. Fans responding to that chance to provide the home field advantage. Three seconds left. Three point lead right now for Arizona. Garcia to Simmons inside the 15, inside the 10. And he is going to be out inside the one yard line. Wow, an interesting strategy. You think they're going to take a shot at the end zone? Instead, DeMarco Simmons is their big guy. They love to get the ball into his hands because of what he can do after the catch. And this shot, he just does a great job of running over defender after defender. That's really close, Paul. Gain of 35 yards. He needed about 35 and a quarter. Let's throw it down to Ari Wolf. All right, Coach Moss, back and forth first half. Talk to me about how your team played here in the first half. Well, we got a couple breaks there that uh, got us the lead, and then we uh, had a fumble there. Uh, they blitzed the corner and hit Kirby on the exchange with the quarterback. And gave them a little momentum back, but uh, they got a four-point lead. We got the ball coming out, so, you know, it's a pretty even game right now. It's the team that plays the best 30 minutes without making mistakes is going to win it. Coach, what will your message be to your team about controlling some of the motion? Because I've seen your guys almost jumping out onto the field a couple of times playing with a lot of emotion. Well, it's, it's an emotional game, and, uh, you know, we'll sell them down. But they're the ones that have gotten the personal fouls. Okay. Thanks a lot, Coach. Um, entertaining first half. Outstanding first half, I would say. And it almost ends with a touchdown. Aaron Garcia to Jamarco Simmons cannot challenge because Les Moss already had the one challenge. You know, it's almost too close that you just want to have another challenge. You want to see if he was able to get in the end zone. So Jacksonville led 32 to 21, but at halftime, Arizona with a strong finish to that first half, retaking that lead. The Rattlers 35 and the Sharks 32. Half time of Arena Bowl 24. Strong finish to that first half, and the Arizona Rattlers coming back to take the lead at 35 to 32. AFL Commissioner Jerry Kurz joining us now. We've got some business to tend to, some good business coming up here momentarily. But first, I think it's safe to say with this atmosphere tonight, the AFL is alive and well in the Valley of the Sun. Absolutely alive and well. And Kurt and I were just talking off, off the air that when he played here in 97, it was electric and it is again here tonight. Tremendous crowd. We're alive back here doing great in the Valley. And not just about the Arena Bowl title. Well, it's going to be here in a few minutes again. But right now, the Hall of Fame class of 2011. Absolutely. We've not done one since 2002, and that's a shame. Uh, a lot of people thought we didn't have one, shouldn't have one, because we don't have a brick-and-mortar one, but we don't need that on our people. And tonight, we're announcing our 2011 Hall of Fame. We had a lot of nominations from media, fans, and then voting took place for the 10 finalists, and we were going to select five inductees. However, uh, the committee, Habarkus, Jim Foster, creator of this game, said, we've not done it for a long time, so we're proud to announce that all 10 finalists are going in tonight. And here they are, tremendous people, and one standing next hey, to me. Hey, the best for last. <laughs> along with Humpty Cooper, wow. who you played against in the great game here in 97. Uh, George LaFrance, who's in the house tonight. Stevie Thomas, great people across, great coach, and Darren Arbett, who you know extremely well. G. Nudo, who was here for many years, worked for the league, now in Chicago. But congratulations to you here. Thank and you all much. these people here are well-deserving 
and everybody said, let's put all 10 in. We've not done it for a while, yeah. and it's the right thing to do. When we talk about arena football being alive and well, and we see the atmosphere here, and so much of that is because of those guys you saw on the screen, the guys that played two ways, that were arena football and, and how arena, bowl, uh, arena football started. So, you know, touchdown Eddie Brown. Uh, you know, you see Humpty Cooper, who, like you said, gave me fits on this exact field numerous times. But it's great to see those names because those were the people that started this league and brought it to where it is today. You're very oh, diplomatic to answer that way, Kurt. But, I mean, the last name on that list was yours. And uh, I think this is the first of a, a couple of Hall of Fames that you're going to end up in. But what was it like when you saw your name there? Well, I mean, it's an honor. I mean, especially from the fact that, you know, I was only fortunate to play this game for three seasons. But, you know, I take great honor in being able to represent this league even as I've moved on and played in a number of other leagues. So, so much of, of my career started here in arena football. I, I say thanks to arena football. So I'm tremendously honored to, uh, to be on that list and to be a part of the Hall of Fame. All right. Hey, Kurt, congratulations, man. Thank you. Very happy for you. And we appreciate Jerry Kurz, the commissioner of the AFL, joining us here to announce the Hall of Fame class for the AFL of 2011. Back to the business at hand, an outstanding arena ball, the Rattlers leading by three. He gets testy. Great job, Jamarco, of walking away when he hit him in the back of the head. That's Hey, that's good football right there. That's smart. That's exactly right. Hey, bring him in here, man. Let's go. Let's go. You know, we're a second half team, baby. We got to get stronger and stronger. That's right. Got to win this half. Zero, zero. Let's get it, baby. Stay together now. Stay together. We busted our ass all week in that heat. It's going to pay off this second half. Keep fucking fighting. Let's go, boys. Hey, win on three. One, two, three. Win. We're uh, winning our matchups right now, okay? Yeah. Take care of the ball. Let's stay out of them third and fourth. Stay out of them third and fourth. Bam, bam, move the ball, okay? And then when they start jumping, we got our double moves and we're getting them on them, okay? We got our double moves. We've been double moving them. We got them on the smash takeoff. Came back, got them on the cell post. We got the matchup we wanted on six on the out of trips, okay? And we, and, and we gave them some power on the pole route over the middle, okay? All right, now just stay in there, okay? Stay in there, play within ourselves. Take care of the football, okay? Moments away from the beginning of the second half, Arizona leading 35 to 32. Let's throw it down to the sideline and check in with Anthony Heron. And Kevin God knows as well as anyone, the possession battle is key in the AFL, but somehow your football team has come out with the lead. How did you get that done, Coach? Well, we just played situational football here at the end. We onside kick, got a defensive stop. Offense took the ball down and punched it in. We, we made up a possession and took the lead for halftime. And they haven't been able to slow down Nick Davila, but Aaron Garcia, you haven't really been able to slow him down yet either. Any adjustments on D? Well, we need to get to him. We need to get to him, disrupt his timing, and get our hands on some balls. All right, thanks, Coach. Good luck in this half. And, Paul, big injury news from the Arizona sidelines. Nick Davila is one of his favorite targets, Trandon Harvey. He's been battling a groin injury throughout the season. Repulled that groin muscle. We saw him get some action early in the game, but he will be out for the remainder of this contest. All right, All right Anthony, thank you very much. And uh, we are set to begin the second half. One more half of football. 2011 AFL season. If it's anything at all like the first half. Second half could be pretty special here as we bring the Arena Football League season to a close. Look at this drama. The one thing that's surprising is a lot of turnovers in that first half. Jeff Hewley has a little seam. It closes up quickly. He gets out to the 11-yard line. Special teams tackle made by Marquise Floyd. Special team stats. Both quarterbacks playing very well. No interceptions yet, Gerd. What else stands out to you here with the first half tail of the tape? Well, I think the big thing is you come in and you hear the turnover ratios for these two teams, plus 33 and plus 20. You expect them not to make very many mistakes. We see three turnovers right there, but there also was a number of other balls that were left on the ground that fortunately those teams got back. So that's probably the one thing that stood out most about these two football teams coming in is you didn't expect them to play with that many airs. You expect more air-free football, and uh, you know hopefully they can clean it up here in the second half. Joe Mo Wilson approaching the 20-yard line and approaching a Jacksonville first down. Tackle made by Marquise Floyd. Gain a nine. I do want to point out, Kurt, both of those turnovers committed by the Arizona special teams. Exactly right. Is that, you know, the offenses are doing their job and protecting the football like they have all year long. And, you know, Virgil Gray's done a tremendous job for this team and being a spark plug for this team, both defensively and on special teams. And just, unfortunately, a couple of those balls, even on big plays, got away from him in that first half. Garcia on second and one. Nice boys coming right back to Jomo Wilson. Looked right, came back left. 
the touch pass and the tackle made by Kevin McCullough. Shark gain of 14, a first down inside Arizona territory. It's really got to give a lot of credit to that offensive line. You see in this situation, Aaron just has to buy a little bit of time to the left, but he doesn't has a great pocket there where he can actually see down the field. Nobody's being pushed in his face. He can take the big shot if it's there. If not, plenty of time to set his feet and take the dump off. Garcia now 14 out of 16 tonight. Three touchdowns to go along with the high percentage. Steps up, fires. Couldn't quite gather his feet to get it out quickly enough or accurately enough because Jerron Harvey was open. What almost looked like a broken coverage. You see Jerron Harvey here in the slot in the motion. He really just splits down the middle, beats the defender. The defender goes to jump somebody else. Would have been an easy pass and catch, but like you said, Aaron Garcia coming out from center seemed to stumble. I don't know if he was trying to take a short drop and get the ball out quick, if the center got pushed back a little bit, but that stumble caused him to throw the ball a little bit high and, and miss on an easy touchdown. Garcia had completed seven passes in a row, now second and ten. And some issues with the snap. We don't see a penalty flag. No flag, and it is now third down and ten. Couldn't really tell. It almost looked like everybody stopped there, like they expected there to be a flag thrown. Jacksonville offense converted two out of two third down situations in the first half. With time. To the back of the end zone, Jomo Wilson touched it, couldn't pull it down, and it'll be fourth and ten. Tight coverage there by Vince Hill. It's a simple corner route here. Again, it looked like it was a ball that Aaron just held a little bit too long. Held it an extra second, tried to put it in the back of the end zone, but by that time, the defender was able to make a play and get underneath the ball to make Aaron have to throw it up and over the top. But Arizona's in a great position right now to flip that possession that we talked about. Sharks wanted the ball coming out of the half to score, be the first team to score in the second half. Arizona in a great position to stop him right here. Fourth and ten, ball batted down, and the Arizona defense steps up huge on the first possession of the second half. And batting that down, number 94, Tyreek Lasker. We've seen an amazing momentum change in just the last couple of minutes of this game, Paul. That onside kick, the fumble recovery, the big play touchdown. Now the stop on fourth down. Pretty impressive by Arizona these last couple of minutes. Rattlers lead by three. Hey, Grandma. Still eating. Hey, Auntie. Hey, Kaylin, DJ. I love y'all. Detroit, baby. Just before the end of the first half, big play by the Jacksonville offense. Jamarco Simmons fighting to get in. Did he get in or not? Well, Les Moss already used his challenge, so he could not challenge. That could change soon. Well, I think a lot of people are thinking, well, he won his first challenge. Does he get his challenge back? We were just talking to Commissioner Kurz, and right now as the league is set up, you get one challenge, and you don't get that back even if you win your challenge. But he said that that is a rule change that will take effect next year, that if you challenge earlier in the game, you win that challenge, you will get your challenge back. So a big momentum switch in this game, but if this were next year, they would have had a chance. Coach Moss would have had a chance to, to replay that and maybe get seven points on their side. Nick Davila, 17 out of 26, four touchdowns, zero picks in the first half. Here's his first strike of the second half, and a strike it is. Football punched out. And a fan recovered it. So Davila to Gathers, and the Rattlers were off and running. The ball was knocked out, and a fan recovered. We will uh, get the interpretation here from tonight's referee, Sean Hockley. Beautiful part of arena football. 28 yard par gain. Fan participation. Saw it a couple weeks ago. We had a fan almost tackle a guy on a kick return. In this situation you see on a fumble scoops it up. He wants to take that ball home. Well, you said the last two seasons, you catch it, you keep it, but that's normally on uh, balls that are no longer live.
The ball was fumbled by Arizona, went forward, and was interfered with by a fan. That is deemed a fumble forward out of bounds. The ball will be brought back to the spot of the fumble. Arizona's ball, first down. Keep the ball as well. You see this play right here, just a little stick move over the middle of the field and then allow Jason Gathers to use that big body from there. Great job punching the ball out, but with no change of possession, you can't expect anything else to happen but the ball to go back to Arizona. Ball punched out by Mishai Robinson. After all that, it is first and 10 Arizona on the Jacksonville 13. Inside give to Odie Armstrong. Jacksonville defense not fooled. Tackle made by Justin Parrish from his linebacker spot. We don't see the run very often in arena football, but talking to the quarterbacks this week, they said one thing they do like to use the run for now is that back in the day, the Jack linebacker had to stay within the box. Now they have the ability to play coverage. So by running the ball every once in a while, it forces that Jack linebacker to just hesitate enough to open up the passing game. So you'll see it a little bit more by these two quarterbacks because they like to be able to control those linebackers. Davila almost intercepted. Number 10 is Terrence Smith getting his hands on that. This was really just a timing route, a corner throw to Chris Jackson, and they were bringing an underneath route to just clear it out. But you see Terrence Smith kind of just happens to be in the way, able to get his hands up and just knock that ball away. Terrence Smith with six interceptions during the regular season, had a shot there at a postseason pick. Now we have third down and seven from the 10-yard line. Davila, 18 for 28, four touchdowns and no picks. Thought he had a lane. Summers cut him off. And Richard Fleebert finished him off. These two teams have done a great job all year of getting pressure on the quarterback. Two of the better teams in the league at creating sacks and pressure. They do a great job here of just closing down the lane so Nick Davila can't step up to throw and can't step up to run. And uh, although he gained a couple yards there, great play by them forcing a fourth down. Arizona Rattlers have entered the rev zone. And they face fourth down and six from the nine yard line. Davila under pressure, making Sharks miss and missing in the back of the end zone. So the Jacksonville Sharks hold, we will see. Holding, offense number 32. That penalty's declined. The result of the play is a turnover on down. Jacksonville, Jacksonville defense, Kurt, matches a stop with a stop of their own. Well, we've seen pretty much everything in this game so far. We've seen the turnovers. We've seen the offensive explosion. And now here in the second half, we've seen the defenses step up big. And, you know, a lot of it is starting with that pressure up the gut, you know, forcing these quarterbacks to hold the ball a little bit longer than they want to. Jacksonville and Arizona both had possessions in the first half. No points to show for it. It's 35-32. Good evening. We're here this evening at Arena Bowl 24 to present the 2011 National Guard MVP award to Nick Davila of the Arizona Rattlers. Nick, tremendous season. Congratulations. Thank you very much, Commissioner. I'm honored to, to have this award for the league and my teammates. Thank you to National Guard for the men and women serving all around the country. NFL Network congratulates Arizona quarterback Nick Davila on an outstanding 2011 season. Nick Davila, 2011 National Guard MVP. His team is the number one seed. He was the number one ranked quarterback. All he cares about right now is team hanging on to a three-point lead. 8.32 left in the third quarter of Arena Bowl 24. Not too happy right now because his offense just got stopped by the Jacksonville defense. Now Aaron Garcia gets another chance with his team trailing by three.
Garcia's offense also stopped on its only possession so far of half number two. On the back pedal, Garcia shuffling to his left and firing to Jomo Wilson. How about that play made by Marquise Floyd? Wow, what a play. It looked like Jomo Wilson had a step or two on Marquise Floyd. All he does is just set him up across the field, a big post route. Looks like he's got him beat, but Marquise Floyd does a great job at that last second to extend himself and get his hands on the ball. Aaron Garcia had completed seven passes in a row. Now he has misfired on his last four. Second down, ten from his own nine. Three steps. A little bit of early contact. Not going to be called. Incomplete to Jeff Uly. And third down and ten is upcoming. We talk so much about these defenses coming in this game. You knew they had the number one and number two offenses, and it, it seemed like these defenses are starting to settle in a little bit. You see these guys are around the ball. They're making plays. They're getting their hands on the football. It's going to be interesting if these defenses kind of get a jump on this. Who's that first team that's going to be able to get their hands on the ball and turn one the other direction? Arizona defense in the regular season, number two in scoring D. Third down and ten. Garcia with time. Another outstanding defensive play. This one made by Vince Hill. This is exactly what I'm talking about. It seems like now every throw is contested. What happened early in the game seemed like the timing was great between these offenses. They were getting separation in the ball. Now you see these defenders are right up on top of every receiver. They're contending every throw. Aaron Garcia 0 oh, for his last six. It is now fourth down and ten. From his own nine. Garcia has time. Jomo Wilson has a step. Vince Hill finishes an outstanding series by that Rattler defense. And the offense will take over on the Jacksonville nine-yard line. In this situation, Garcia has plenty of time in the pocket, but this is just a coverage sack. They do a great job of covering up. It's almost like they knew what the route was. Garcia tries to make a play to Jomo Wilson, put it on his back shoulder, but it looked like everybody was covered in that situation, and he just had to throw it up because it was fourth down. Aaron Garcia now 0 for his last seven. Antaj Hawthorne. Slamming him down late. Now it's Nick Davila right back in it. Inside the 10-yard line. First and goal from the 9. Davila to Odie Armstrong. Easy touchdown, Rattlers. You got to love these little dunk passes, Paul. So much pressure on these receivers and quarterbacks to make play after play, especially in the red zone. In this situation, all the receivers coming to the right side, a trips formation, just slipped the back out on the back side. Easy throw and catch for the touchdown. Now we do have a penalty marker on the field. Jason Gathers was dancing right in front of one of the Jacksonville defenders. Excessive celebration. And Arizona will be penalized. Will not cost them the touchdown, though. After the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct taunting number three on the defense. Excuse me, on the scoring team. That penalty will be carried over to the first play after the kickoff. The touchdown counts. Nick Davila to Odie Armstrong, an active part of this Rattler offense, set rushing records for this franchise for rushing yards and rushing touchdowns. And there he has 54. a receiving touchdown. Rattlers push the lead to 10 yards and another flag. Jason Witzak immediately after he made that extra point was into it. With a member of the Jacksonville Sharks defense. Number 99 is Jason Holman. The contact with the kinker was incidental contact that he had already regained his balance. There is no foul on the play. The unsportsmanlike
by Schwamdijk foul from the scoring play will still be carried over after the kickoff. The tie is good. Uh, difficult to hear Mr. Hockley there, but he uh, said no penalty on the extra point attempts. The penalty on Jason Gathers, though, on sportsmanlike conduct immediately after the touchdown will stand, and it will cost Arizona on to kick off. The lead is now back to double digits, the Rattlers by 10. It was not too long ago that the Jacksonville Sharks led here in Arena Bowl 24 late in the first half, 32 to 21. 21 unanswered points later for the Arizona Rattlers. Right now, this game belongs to the home team. But yeah, we were talking to Coach Moss. He's played in, in 10 of these, or he's been a part of 10 Arena Bowls, and we asked him what advice, what do you bring to the table from all that experience? And the one thing he said is you have to weather the storm. That there's a lot of pressure on wanting to win the big one, so if something goes against you early, you have to weather that storm and be able to continue to play your game. And although that came from Coach Moss, the, the coach of the Sharks, uh, you see the Rattlers applying that right now, is getting down by quite a few there at the end of the first half, but weathering the storm, making some plays, four straight stops, defense Defensively against this great Sharks offense. So they've really done a good job of weathering that storm. Now they hold a 10 point lead here in the second half. And even players in championship games who don't normally press, or coaches that don't normally press, I think it would be easy to turn to that and do so right now. Well, I think you're right. And, you know, Coach Moss was also telling us that early in the year, you know, this team went through training camp and there wasn't any arguments or any, any fights between his team. And he wondered if they were going to be aggressive enough. And now it's funny that you're starting to see these guys getting a little bit chippy, getting a little bit frustrated. You see a couple late hits, even though that flag was picked up. You're starting to wonder if that frustration is getting to the Sharks football team. Jeff Hewley out across the 10, but only out to the 11-yard line. Arizona special teams led by Virgil Gray. Aaron Garcia and the Jacksonville offense struggling big time. Garcia 0 for his last like seven in this play will be stretch. In 10 yards, first down Jacksonville. Jacksonville. Wouldn't be surprised. Jacksonville outscored 21 nothing. Go ahead, Kurt. I wouldn't be surprised here, Paul. If Aaron comes out and just calls a couple quick plays. You know, as a quarterback, when you're struggling, momentum's gone against you. The one thing you always want is you want, you know, your coordinator to give you a couple easy throws, throws that you can see and complete, try to get that momentum and that confidence back. So with Aaron calling the plays, let's see if he calls his own number to some of these quick throws, get it into his playmaker's hands. Trailing by 10, going to hit the five-minute mark during this play. Here comes Aaron Garcia. That's how you get back on track. That's Jeff Hewley inside the 15-yard line to the 14. Tackle made by Vince Hill. And that's a Jacksonville pickup of 15 yards on first down. And so I think there's where that veteran leadership, you know, things start to get away from you. You know, you're the leader of this football team. Uh, you're calling your own plays. You say, hey, okay, we've got to settle this thing down. You know, we don't have to try to get the big play. We don't have to try to get it all back in one play. Let's settle in. I got to make a couple plays for my team and, and get them going again. Aaron Garcia playing 17th season, but in his very first arena bowl. Backpedaling, taking his time, and just gets rid of it to avoid the sack. And it will bring up second down 10. Good coverage by the Rattler defense and nice pressure up front late by the front three. That was really just another coverage sack. You saw that they tried to bring two crosses across the field. The Arizona defenders recognized it. They dropped off their coverage. They just passed it off, and there was really nowhere for Aaron Garcia to go. Second down 10 now. Going to hit the four-minute mark with the Sharks trailing by 10. Woo! Gerard Harvey in high motion. Garcia to Wilson inside the five and just kind of takes a knee right at the first down marker. Tackle going to be given to Kevin McCullough, and that's a gain of nine. I like what they've come out and done. You quiet the crowd down a little bit. You make a few plays. You allow your defense to catch their breath a little bit. You know, it's all about the leadership part of this thing. Is that settle everybody down. Let everybody take a deep breath and get back into this football game. Don't be surprised to see the ball go to the fullback, Kirby Griffin. Also, number 22, Jamarco Simmons, getting a lot of carries down here near the goal line. There's Simmons around the right end. The Arizona defense, there to stuff him. Now, this is going to be awfully close to a first down. It's a gain of one. Going to depend on the mark, the tackle made by Kevin McCullough. That's why they love Simmons so much, is that 
he's not going to go down on that first hit. You always got to love backs that, you know, can play through contact. You see in this situation, hit behind the line of scrimmage, keeps those feet going. I think that second effort probably got him the first down and, and gives him another chance at the end zone. Yeah, we'll give him a gain of one and a half to present first and goal from the four-yard line to Aaron Garcia. Swing out to Jerron Harvey. Again, the Arizona defense there. Marquise Floyd with a form tackle just inside that five-yard line. You always know when you get down into the tight red zone in arena football with those end zones only being eight yards deep, it's very difficult to score. I love what Arizona's doing right now. You see them rallying around the football. You see all eight guys are rallying to it every time the ball's thrown, every time the ball's hand off. This Arizona defense it, it is really coming into their own this second half. They seem to be really comfortable with what Jacksonville's doing out here and making it really, really difficult on them down in the red zone. Inside of two minutes, Garcia coming backside. Jamarco Simmons, excellent catch. Touchdown, Sharks. And there is another flag for unsportsmanlike. <laughs> And this getting a little bit out of hand here in the third quarter. Number 56 is Vladimir Richard. Touchdown from Garcia to Simmons from three yards out. Starting to see that frustration of knowing that you're only so far away from the championship. You're starting to see these guys press a little bit. Causing some frustration, some late hits. And we're followed by both teams on the play after the touchdown. Personal foul on the scoring team, number 56. Personal foul on the defense, number 94. Those fouls offset, the score counts. At this point, Kurt, based off of what we've seen in the third quarter, I got to think that the officials, the head coaches, and the quarterbacks are going to let their teams know on no uncertain terms. Let's, let's uh, cut this out. You don't want a big mistake like that and allowing your emotions to get the best of you to cost you, especially down the stretch. So I think you're right. The coaches, the quarterbacks, the leaders on these teams got to settle these teams down and allow, you know, their team not to make one of these big mistakes that cost them. Game's way too good right now to make it about some unsportsmanlike conduct calls. Missed extra points. Take a look at the touchdown now that made it 42 to 38. The thing, Arizona isn't making it easy on this Jacksonville team. Great coverage here. This was just one of those plays where it's, hey, my guy's bigger than your guy. I'm going to throw it around you and let my big guy go get it. But Aaron loves Simmons down in this situation because he does have such a big body. It's hard to get around him. Very similar to those Anquan Boldens and Larry Fitzgeralds that I'm so comfortable with. It's, it's all about getting in the right position, throwing the ball away from the defender. Let's go down to Ari Wolf. Hey, Aaron, was it Arizona doing something different defensively, or did you guys just get out of rhythm offensively? Oh, no, I think they're doing the same thing. They're squatting on our routes a little bit more. We got to be able to run by him, and we got to protect just a split second longer. And um, we didn't do that that first series. The first series or two, but we'll get it. We got to keep playing. And Aaron, there's so much emotion, and players starting to get into it on the field. What do you do as a leader to make sure your guys keep those emotions in check? Go crazy. No, we're playing. No, we just got to talk, man. We're trying to defend his teammate, and uh, and that's how it is. That's part of football. We got to be smarter than that. We got to win this this football game first. Worry about pride, ego, and all that stuff later. Okay, thanks a lot, Aaron. All right, Paul, back to you. As excellent as Aaron Garcia has been throughout the regular season, and every quarterback is going to have some knock on him, Kurt. The knock on Aaron Garcia, and I'm sure he knows it, that he's not been as good in the postseason as in the regular season. Well, you know, it's funny. The, the guy can accomplish everything there is to accomplish. You know, the most accomplished quarterback in arena football, probably one of the most accomplished quarterbacks in all of professional football. But that's the one thing that continues to hang over his head. And as you know, both of us having played quarterback before, that playing the quarterback position is all about winning. You know, that you can accomplish a lot of things and throw a lot of touchdowns, but you have to win football games and specifically win championships. And that's been the one thing, the only thing that's eluded Aaron Garcia throughout his career. Rattlers leading by four, 42-38. And just going down is Virgil Gray. He already has two fumbles this evening, both fumbles on special teams that Jacksonville recovered. Tackle made by LaRache Jackson. All right, here we go. Let's go. Left wing zoom, 4 five, 5 Be smart. Be smart. Hey, let's go now. Left wing zoom. 
Four, five, five. On two, ready? Nick Dabla, the highest rated passer in the AFL. 71%. 107 more touchdowns and interceptions in the regular season. One minute left here in the third quarter of Arena Bowl 24 off the back foot. Incomplete to Jason Gathers. Davila under some serious pressure in the first half. Heard that Jacksonville defense getting after him. Well, this is exactly what they do, need to do at this point. They got to get that possession back. And that's going to come by forcing the quarterback to make a bad play. And in this league, not necessarily about sacks, but if you can push that pocket, keep him moving in the pocket, make him make one of those throws that we should probably hold on to. You heard Coach Guy say, be smart, be smart. It's tough yeah. to be smart when you got a pocket being pushed in front of you and guys hitting you. So that's what the Jacksonville Sharks have to do. And that one is just fired incomplete. Did you ever make that point to an offensive coordinator or coach? Hey, it's, it's tough to be smart when I got these guys in my face. Give me a break. It sounds so easy, you know. Don't rush a throw. Don't try to force a throw. But when you see one of those big 300-pounders coming right at you, it's easy to say, well, I would rather get rid of this thing than take that hit. But uh, you know, that's part of the position is, is understanding when you can take a chance and when you can't. And that was Jason Holman applying the pressure on the final the play of the third quarter. quarter. We head to the fourth quarter of Arena Bowl 24. The Rattlers 42, the Sharks 38. And when you enter quarter number four with a four-point game, you expect to see the score by quarters look just like this. Very close to first, second, and third. What jumps out to me there, the defense stepping up big time in the third quarter. Seven to six, all the scoring we saw. Leading into the fourth quarter of Arena Bowl 24. Time for Aaron's lucky dog fan of the game. When you come to an AFL game, even the Arena Bowl, you catch a ball, you get to keep it. Tonight we are proud to feature the Aaron's lucky dog fan of the game. That is a nice grab. We also had a fan recover a fumble, Kurt. That's one of the things you love the front row of Arena Football. You might get a, a player in your lap. You might be able to throw a beer on somebody. Or you might get to take home a souvenir football. I think taking home the football is the best of those three options. I, I definitely think it is. Although my son was hit in the front row by a player, and he thought that was pretty cool as well. You got family here tonight? Yeah, I got my boys here tonight. Kurt Warner being inducted. or uh... There is Chris Jackson pulling it in from Nick Davila. Down to the five-yard line. Defense. 35-yard game. Mishai Robinson with the defense for Jacksonville. You know, we talked earlier about this team losing Rod Windsor and what a huge part of this offense he was. First team all at AFL two years in a row. And they called Chris Jackson late in the year when Rod Windsor was signed by the Browns. And he's really come in tonight as a veteran and really brought some leadership to this team. And you see there just a, a quick post route going up over the top of Robinson to make the play. But Chris Jackson has been an integral part of what they've done offensively tonight. Davila, 20 out of 33, approaching 300 yards, five touchdowns, and no interceptions. And that's going to be pass interference on Mishan Robinson. Pass interference, defense number one. After this, you see the goal, first down. One thing that makes it so hard on these defensive backs are these timing routes. Three steps and the ball's out, that the ball's in the air, and this defender doesn't have a chance to react to it. I think that's something that we're seeing tonight that Mishai Robinson was just trying to get his hands on him, but the ball was out so quick that just putting his hands on him just a couple years, yards down the field created the pass interference call. Chris Jackson with that 35 yard reception moments ago, now over 100 yards receiving tonight. Abla work in the back of the end zone one more time, and again, we're going to see pass interference. It appears Mishai Robinson. Guilty for the second play in a row. Pass interference. Defense number one. Half the distance to the goal. First down. And again, it's so difficult because these DBs are just trying to get their hands on these big receivers and slow them down. But with the timing throw, as soon as that ball gets in the air, they can call pass interference. And you saw this just a one step balls up in the air. And he's just trying to, to hang on to the big Jason gathers down in that red zone. And it's difficult on a little guy like that when you've got those big bodies being thrown around and you're just trying to hang on, do everything you can. Unfortunately, he's been caught two times in a row. First and goal from the one. Odie Armstrong dragging Sharks into the end zone.
Armstrong setting a franchise record for rushing touchdowns in the regular season. That one puts his team up by 10. Very seldom do you see a fullback leading the team in touchdowns. Now three touchdowns already for Odie Armstrong. Pretty impressive job. The franchise record for rushing touchdowns at 17 in the 18-game regular season. And the lead increased to 11. Aaron Garcia in his very first arena ball appearance has his work cut out for him in the fourth quarter. Aaron Garcia, our lead story coming into the night. The AFL all-time leader in passing yards and passing touchdowns tonight. Three touchdowns, but his team trails by 11 early in the fourth quarter. And he was nearly flawless in that first half, going 12 for 14. It almost seemed easy for him. But this Arizona secondary has come out on a mission in the second half and really made it difficult in the second half for Aaron and the Sharks to get anything going. There we see Garcia. Keeping those hands dry. He's 18 out of 28, 243. Three touchdowns or four touchdowns. Zero interceptions. Back deep, Jeff Hewley. Already with two kick returns for touchdowns in the postseason. No better way to get the momentum on your side. If you get a kick return, and obviously he's done it a number of times already in the playoffs, this would be a great opportunity to get one back for his team. And we talked about it earlier, Kurt, how even, even players who don't normally press the panic button, you get into a championship game, a double-digit deficit, you probably got to fight the urge to press a little bit. When you get into that fourth quarter, and you're starting to watch the clock tick down, realize that you know there's less and less time that somebody has to make a play. And so I think you're right, Paul. It is easy as you get closer to the end of the game to try to push a little bit and try to do a little too much. Touchback. So here comes Aaron Garcia. 12:37 left. Touchback will be placed at the five-yard line. First down. 12.37 left in Arena Bowl 24. Let's take a listen to Aaron Garcia calling the first play on this drive. Went on three. One, two, three, win. Let's go left. Z back. 32 hit. Wide post on one. Right, 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 right. Ball batted down and done so by the all AFL nose tackle Antaj Hawthorne. Talk about frustration. That's one of those things that can truly frustrate a quarterback. You're just trying to make some plays, get out of your own end zone, get the rhythm going a little bit. Great job by Hawthorne just getting his hands up, frustrating the Sharks offense. Second time in this half that Hawthorne has knocked down a pass. Second down 10. From their own five, Jeff Hewley in high motion. Garcia just floats one in the one-handed interception by Kevin McCullough. The 
Garcia's first interception of the night. And we talked about the big change. What Aaron always worries about now is that Jack That's linebacker. His ability to move outside the pocket. Defense, illegal helmet contact. Helmet to helmet. Ten yards from the previous spot. First down. Negated. Take a look at the penalty that wiped out the interception by McCullough. Little blow to the head. Yeah, never get away with that. Get away with a lot of things, but never get a blow with a blow to the head for the quarterback. So, unfortunately, a great play by the Jack linebacker. Darren tried to fit one over the top, but all for naught. Aaron Garcia gets a break. And this is Jomo Wilson. Out near Jacksonville, first down tackle made by Marquise Floyd. The gain is eight. The blow to the head right there. Number 70 for the Arizona Rattlers, Marcus Pittman, wiping out the interception. A good looking INT would have been a huge interception by Kevin McCullough. It's amazing, just the little things can change the complexion of the game. You go from an interception to a first down just because he went just a little bit high. Second down to Jerron Harvey. 6'5, 220 goes up and snatches it inside the 10 yard line. So, how about that for Jacksonville? A couple moments ago, you think you turned it over, now you're inside the 10 yard line. Try to get that momentum back. Throw it up in the air to your big guy, let him make a play, bouncing off the walls. Guys are getting excited. Guys are getting fired up. Now you need to put six points on the board and get this momentum back on your side. 19-yard gain. Garcia to Harvey, and it's now first and goal from the seven-yard line. Garcia wants Simmons. What a catch. Touchdown, Sharks. Wow. Garcia talks about how he loves this guy in the red zone. This guy's got an ability to find the football, to use his body. I thought for sure when Garcia let go of that ball, there was two defenders there. I thought that was going to go the other direction, but his guy went up strong, caught the ball, and was able to get it in the end zone. And sometimes you throw it into coverage and uh, come out on top. You know, that's one of those where you're on the sideline as a coach and you're going, no, 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 no. Yes. Great play, Aaron. Good you know, decision. <laughs> I've been there plenty of times where you let it go and you think, oh, man, that was a bad decision. But fortunately, it worked out in their favor. Extra point up and in, and that drive could have gone the other way easily because moments ago we thought we had the interception, but it was erased. A blow to the head by Marcus Pittman, 49-45. And the Arizona Rattlers lead Arena Bowl 24, 49 to 45. And I'm joined here on the sideline by specialist Nicholas Baca of the Army National Guard. And we see Commissioner Jerry Kurz here with us as well. And we had another specialist on with us earlier. He was in his fatigues. And we see that you have your dress blues on. And you gave me a little description of the difference between the two sides earlier. Yes, sir. Well, what I got right now is this, this is my dress blue uniform. I do military funeral honors. And this is what we wear on a daily basis to honor every veteran that served in the military. And there was one particular bat that basically makes you our hometown hero, the one in your top left lapel. Can you describe that one? That's my combat infantryman's badge, and uh, I earned it in Iraq. And it's a coveted badge honored by the military for being in the infantry. And Specialist Baca served two tours in Iraq, and we are certainly glad that he's home safely. Thank you for your time, sir. Thank you very much. Back to you, Paul. All right, Anthony, thank you very much. 9-10 left in Arena Bowl 24, and Arizona now leading only by four. Marco Simmons touchdown, cutting the lead down. Virgil Gray gets up, gets across the goal line, and almost out to the five-yard line. We'll get him just to the five, and that's where Nick Davila and the Rattler offense will begin. Tackle made by Jamarco Simmons just right after the he scored the touchdown. The from the scoring play will be enforced 10 yards from the end of the run. First down. Let's go left, deep, short, south spot delay. Here we go, here we go. Left, deep, short, south spot delay. I'm on. Both quarterbacks, Nick Davila, Aaron Garcia, with 20 completions right now, and five touchdowns and zero interceptions. 
Number 15 out of Michigan State is Kerry Reed. Has one touchdown tonight. Tackle made by Terrence Smith. Gain it two. Here we go, we got it. All right, let's go. Let's go, X light, wing zoom, three. I don't, no, 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 hey, uh, right wing zoom, dig six press. Let's go. Right, right wing zoom, dig six press. I'm too ready. Davila with time and the double pump, and Mishai Robinson with the INT. Returns it to the 22-yard line. Remember, he had a couple of pass interference calls on the last drive. Now he comes back with the pick. And you're at the point in the game where you're just saying, all we need to do is stay on track. Don't try to force anything. Don't try to make a big play. Out. Not really sure what Davila was trying to do there. Two guys going to the same area. I'm not sure if there was a messed up route. He tried to fit it in. Mishai Robinson, as we know, is a ball hawk. You put it up like that, give him an easy pick to be able to go up and get the ball, turn the tides right here, give his team a chance to take the lead again. We do have an injured shark down on the 10-yard line, and that's Arache Jackson. Mishai Robinson led the team with 11 interceptions during the regular season. Also led the AFL in passes broken up. Very aggressive. You see media timeout. Ari Wolf will have Mishai Robinson momentarily. It's 49 to 45, Arizona on top. <laughs> Nick Davila and his Arizona Rattlers leading at home in Arena Bowl 24. Just inside of eight minutes left. 49 to 45. Aaron Garcia and the Jacksonville offense within striking distance. And Garcia right now a solid night. 20 out of 31. Five touchdowns, zero interceptions, looking for Arena Bowl victory at number one in his 17-year career. Aaron Garcia does have one interception tonight. This is Jeff Hewley. And that's a fine tackle made by Vince Hill. Let's check in with Ari Wolf. All right, here with Mishai Robinson. Mishai, you've been close all night. Your team desperately needed to get the ball back. Tell me about the interception. Uh, just in the right position, man. Quarterback made a bad choice, and I was able to be in the right position to make the play for our defense. Mishai, tell me about you going up against all these big receivers all night. How you manage at your size to go up and play with those guys? Just to not think about it. I've been short my whole life, so why am I going to worry about it now, now that I'm 28? Well said, Mishai. Paul, back to you. All right, thank you, Ari. Thank you, Mishai. Gerard Harvey at 6-5 goes up and gets it just inside the one-yard line. We do have a penalty marker on the 23. It would be a gain of 22. Personal foul, tripping, number 99 offense. 10 yards from the previous spot, replay second down. This is one of those situations where guy up front gets beat and as he's going down he's trying to protect his quarterback just sticks his leg out there unfortunately it blew a tremendous catch by harvey this is one of those things where you look at this pass and you say oh don't throw this one double covered again but harvey does a great job of getting his body between himself the ball and the defender goes up and gets it at his highest point great catch would like to clear up one mistake i made a moment ago eric garcia zero interceptions tonight and that's a strike to Jerron Harvey inside the 20-yard line. Just enough for a Jacksonville first down. And here's the point, Paul, when we talk about championship quarterbacks. We're talking about Aaron Garcia, and the one thing that's eluded him is winning that Arena Bowl championship. And here's the point. Six and a half minutes left in the fourth quarter. Your team's down four. This is where you separate yourself. This is where you become a championship quarterback. It's his time right now to shine and to make some plays for this football team. Gain of 18. First down and 10 as the Sharks now inside Rattler territory. Joe Mo Wilson going to be the man in high motion. Garcia to a wide open fullback Kirby Griffin. Another Jacksonville first down just inside the five yard line. Garcia to Griffin for 14 yards. We saw in the last series when he threw the interception to the Jack linebacker. 
as we were talking about earlier. Aaron's always conscious of where that backer's going. In this situation, that Jack linebacker runs out of there, so he calls just a quick screen, take advantage of that, try to keep that Jack linebacker honest so he can make those plays down the field. So many times this happens in the Arena Football League. A team is trailing, trailing, trailing. You look up with a clock winding down. They have an excellent chance to take the lead. But when you talk about weather the storm, no game is it more important than in arena football. Hey, Kirby Griffin, huge on that drive. The reception to take him inside the five, and the touchdown run from four yards out. And just like that, Jacksonville retakes the lead. Now, touchdowns have come, I don't want to say easy, but the extra points have certainly not been easy. But for Jacksonville, they've blown four opportunities to convert extra points tonight. When there's so much scoring, sometimes you forget about those extra points, but they're going to come into play here in these last few minutes of the game where you're starting to see the strategies, you're starting to see one point difference, two point difference. Because of those mixed extra, po missed extra points, the strategy becomes a little bit different. Hey, Jerron Harvey at six foot five becomes kind of a basketball player, goes up and gets it, and that's two points. Pretty easy touchdown here. Just a little pitch outside. Great job by the guys up front. Just get a hat on the hat. A really easy touchdown run there. And it just seems to be like the play of choice is get Jerron Harvey matched up on one of these little receivers and throw the ball up. But uh, he's been making play after play. We'll see if that comes into play later in the game as they need a touchdown or need a big play. And we've seen both teams inside the five go with the running game to get across the goal line. And Curtin, you have pointed out, I remember the first conversation I ever had with you about the AFL about a year and a half ago. You said right away, it's so hard to throw touchdown passes inside that five yard line. You gotta have a good running game. I think you're right, but people try to do it because the game is built around passing. But you see that it sometimes becomes much easier just to hand it to that big guy down there because everybody's so conscious of those receivers, these big tall receivers and throwing the football that sometimes you get an easy one just like that. From Blazers and shirts to their world famous pants, Bonobos makes clothing that fits Great on every guy. See for yourself at Bonobos.com and use code AFL for 20% off your next order. Because from the first tailgate to the last touchdown, we hear that if you wear Bonobos, you're sure to score. Bonobos, clothes that look good and feel great. All right. And 20% off, too. Can't lose. Jacksonville back on top, 53 to 49 inside of five minutes now. This is Virgil Gray. Lincoln tackles and sprinting across the 20 yard line. Nice return, Virgil Gray. We have a penalty marker right at the midfield strike. Personal foul, face mask on the kicking team number seven. 10 yards will be added to the end of the run. First down. Take a look at the penalty here and also the nice return by Virgil Gray. Great job of using his strength. Running over a guy there. The kicker's trying to make a play. He's just holding on for dear life. Unfortunately, he got the face mask there. So a big break. You see Virgil Gray trying to spark his team after a couple of those mistakes in the first half. Nick Davila, 17 yards away from... Retaking the lead. Jacksonville has scored 15 straight points. Davila gathers. Touchdown, Rattlers. That's one way to get the crowd back into it, ball. Didn't take long. Another one of those great timing throws that if he was any later with this ball, Terrence Smith falls off in the corner and knocks this down, but he does a great job of splitting the defenders, hitting his back foot, and getting the ball out on time. He's done a great job all season and tonight at getting those balls out on time. 17 yards, Nick Davila to Jason Gathers. The Jacksonville four-point lead was short-lived. Because Arizona now leads again, this time by three. 
You see, Paul, there's nothing really fancy about this route. Just a quick corner route, but you see Terrence Smith falling off at the last second. If that ball was at all late, he has an interception or a knockdown. But a great job by those two guys of getting the ball out on time, him turning his head, getting his head around, and uh, making an easy touchdown. And down we go to Anthony Harris. And I'm with the best nose guard in the league, all arena performer, and Todd Hawthorne. You guys have come up with a couple of stops earlier in the game. What does this defense need to do to come up with the one that could potentially seal the game? Well, you know, as far as D-line goes, just got to keep getting that relentless pressure, as Coach Guy always says, and pretty much just lock them down in the back end, and we'll be okay. And we saw them bring in center Mike Mabry. He just signed this week with the football team, former great player in the AFL. How do you feel your matchup with him is gone? I think I've been doing a great job against him. You know, uh, I, mean, he, I heard he was a great player back in the day, but it seems to me like he lost his step. Paul and Kurt, I'm a little biased, but I think this guy could decide the game tonight. All right, the former defensive lineman, point to a defensive lineman. We understand. We point to quarterbacks. Exactly. This has lost his step. Now he's got to go out and show that uh, he's got that extra step and make a big play against Garcia at some point here in the last three minutes. And the first three quarters, uh, first three and two-thirds quarters, pretty good, but the game really begins right now. Now you're it's exactly, on. You're exactly right. You, you play so much situational football, so you try to get to that last three minutes. If you're not blowing the team out, you just want to be close, and now the strategy comes into play. Using the clock, using the timing, the big plays to the short plays. You want to have the ball in your hands at the end of the game so you can set yourself apart by making one play to finish this game off. Jeff Hewley, number three in the AFL in all-purpose yards during the regular season, set to bring this one back. That's a live football. And Terrence Smith does a nice job of pouncing on that. Been a lot of crazy things tonight, Paul, and a lot of lucky bounces. A lot of things that could have gone against both of these teams, just like this. Takes a fortunate bounce to bounce back into one of the Shark players' hands. Otherwise, that might have been an easy recovery for Arizona. Three minutes, seven seconds remaining in Arena Bowl 24. The first Arena Bowl for Aaron Garcia. The AFL's all-time leader. Passing yards and passing touchdowns. Jerron Harvey from behind the line of scrimmage out to the 10-yard line. Tackle made by Marquise Floyd. Gain of five. Let's go right, wide back. Let's go 33 hits on one. Garcia wanted to get rid of that one quickly, couldn't get the ball out, lost his footing. And coming up with a sack is Marcus Pittman. Loss of five. It looked like a whole lot happened here. It looked like his feet got caught up. It looked like he wanted to throw that one of those little quick one-step throws, but he got stepped on as he was trying to come out of there. And just tripped an easy sack in that situation, but still in a manageable situation right here. Inside of two minutes now, third down and eight from his own five-yard line. Garcia with a nice pocket. And look at that catch by Jerron Harvey, sprinting inside the five and across the goal line. Touchdown at Jacksonville. This guy has continued to come up big in this game. Play after play, it's almost like Aaron Garcia is just throwing it up. That one was a tough catch. The big guy going from right to left, the ball kind of over his shoulder, has to reach out and extend to get it, and then obviously doing the rest with his big body, getting the ball in the end zone. Boy, what a catch. Man. 45 yards, Aaron Garcia finding That's his six-foot-five receiver. One-minute timing rules are now in effect. Each team has three timeouts remaining, and they will all be 30 seconds in length. Media timeout. Jerron Harvey with a 45-yard catch and run at Jacksonville, leading by three at the one-minute mark. 11. Well, everybody in the stadium and everybody at home saw that catch, and they're looking and going, wow, 
But as you and I both know as a quarterback, our best friend is protection. And you see in that situation there, Aaron Garcia had all time to throw. Really a great defensive play by Virgil Gray trying to go up over the top. But Harvey just does a tremendous job of extending, catching the ball. And it was pretty easy from there. Quarterback's good friend is a, a fingertip catch by your receiver. Yeah, no kidding. You get all kinds of time, and then your receiver makes a play like that. I'll take both those guys on my side. Six foot five. Using all of that height to stretch out across the goal line to make it 59 to 56 with one minute left. Extra points been far from automatic for the Jacksonville special teams. Gapazzoli has missed three on his own, and there was a botched hold or a botched snap. Four different occasions, the Sharks failed to convert the extra point. But not that time, right down the middle. And the Shark lead increased to four. Take a look at the Rev. The Rev Honey hit of the game. Coming on special teams, this is Jeff Hewley. And he is struck by Marquise Floyd, who has had an active game tonight. And Marquise Floyd of the Rattlers credited with the Rev Honey hit of the game. Let's check in with Ari Wolf. All right, here with Aaron Garcia. Talk about the confidence you have in Jerron Harvey to put that ball up there and let him go get it. Well, we made a move probably this last quarter. We were stalling out a little bit. He's such a big, big receiver, such a great athlete, and I got so much confidence in him that I'm, I'm, I'm going to put it up there for him. He told me he'll go get it, and he ain't lied to me yet. Tell me about the strategy here in the final minute, what you guys hope to do here. Well, we want to, if they're going to score, we want them to score quick so we get the ball back and have a chance to score last and win it. Hopefully we get a stop and call it a day. Okay, thanks, Aaron. All right, All right Paul. You can see why Aaron Garcia believes in Jerron Harvey. Eight catches, 105 yards, couple of touchdowns. Came into this one with five touchdown receptions in the postseason on only seven receptions. I've been really impressed with the play calling of Aaron Garcia. You know, there was a one point there in the second half where they'd been stopped four straight series. And we were wondering how they were going to respond. And I think he's done a great job of not trying to press. You know, he's made short play after short play. Hasn't tried to force anything down the field. The biggest forces he's had has been throwing it up to that guy, which uh, doesn't seem like it's much of a force because of the way he's been playing. So uh, I think he's done a great job of really managing this after the momentum, momentum really swung to the Arizona sideline. Virgil Gray back deep to receive for the Arizona Rattlers. Onside kick. Arizona recovers. And bringing it back to the five-yard line. Riley Swanson with the heads-up special teams play. And really not a big deal that he caught it and returned it as long as he doesn't get in the end zone. Now it becomes that cat and mouse game. We want to score, but how quick do we score? How much time do we leave on the clock? Do we score on one play in hopes that Jacksonville has to score and we get the ball back before the end of the game? But this is where arena football gets to be about strategy, that you feel like you're going to score. It's just a matter of when do you do it, how do you do it, and how do you save enough time to get that last possession? Davila with time and a wide open. Chris Jackson. We talked about how big Chris Jackson has come up in this game. That veteran receiver that's been there before. See, in this situation, he fakes across the field, just pivots back. Mishai Robinson's going to chase him to the other side of the field. He puts his foot in the ground, does a great job of just finding the hole. Easy pitch and catch. Before is eligible. Just inside the upright. Arizona Rattlers retake the lead. Back and forth we go here in the final minute. 52 seconds left. So now, if you're making the call here, Mr. Kurt Warner, do you go with the onside kickback or just a regular kickoff? Well, I think in a situation like this, you almost have to go with the onside kick. You know, because can Jacksonville hold out those last 52 seconds? Possible if they have the whole, full length of the field. In this situation, if you kick it, especially if you kick it inside that 10-yard range where they've only got four downs with your timeouts to go, I think you have to onside kick it here. Try to let them get the ball and get that last possession again. Here's Anthony Heron. 
uh, with Kevin Guy. Let's talk strategy. Final minute, chess match ensues. What are you looking to do? Well, we got to play situational football here. We have no choice to hold tight kick. Make sure we got three timeouts. You know, either we stop them or they score and we get the ball last to try to come down and score and win the game. Thanks, Coach. Ball. All right. Coach Guy letting us know what he's thinking here with 52 seconds left. And his Rattlers leading by three. Kicking off to a quarterback, Aaron Garcia, who's been every bit as good as expected. Look at that. Kicks it with the back of his foot. Looking to catch the Jacksonville Sharks by surprise. Now, that did not happen. Jacksonville ready for that. Number six is LaRache Jackson. Uh, Kurt, I've never seen this. Me neither. It caught me by surprise, but the Sharks were paying attention. They weren't going to be tricked in this situation. They did a great job, but pretty innovative play right there to try to get the possession back. But uh, good job by LaRache Jackson there. When I asked you what you were going to do, Kurt, why, why didn't you say that? I would have my kicker kick it with the back of his foot. That was part of it. I just said onside kick. I didn't tell you how I would have done it. I would have definitely done it just like that. It all counts. 51 seconds left. Ball was batted down. Aaron Garcia's arm hit. Antaj Hawthorne around there one more time. And a big benefit there with that incomplete pass. It stops the clock. So if Jacksonville does score here, it saves a little bit of time for the Rattlers coming back. Arena Bowl 24, the right to be called AFL champions in 2011. Inside a minute left. And Aaron Garcia looking for that first, that elusive Arena Bowl title in his 17-year career. Throwing behind the intended receiver, Jamarco Simmons. It'll be third and ten. Little miscommunication right there, but now you got two plays. You got two plays to get the ball in the end zone. You take two shots at the end zone to use one of these big guys, throw it underneath, let them use their big body to get it in. It'll be interesting to see what Aaron Garcia does here. Third down and 10, 45 seconds left. Also remember, Paul, they have a chance to get a first down without scoring, which can use some more of that clock as well. Both teams have all three timeouts remaining. Garcia off the back foot, Jomo Wilson, touchdown Jacksonville. 11 yards from Aaron Garcia to Jomo Wilson. Aaron Garcia told me this week that his safety net all year long has been Jomo Wilson. He was a high school quarterback, he understands the game, he knows what Aaron's seeing on every single play. And so he said anytime he's in need of a play, that's the guy he's gonna go to because he knows they're gonna see the same thing that the defense is doing. When you want to praise a quarterback, you say he can make all the throws. And on third and ten in the championship game, off your back foot with a touch pass to the end zone, that's a pretty impressive one. Jacksonville leading by three. Important attempt by Capizzoli. He is up and in right down the middle, and the Sharks again lead by four. And you see the pressure up the gut. Guy coming on Garcia off his back foot, but really nothing fancy about this throw. It's just really a little dig route. But again, using these big bodies, using his intelligence to create some space. But you see, here's where it all started. Aaron bought himself just enough time to be able to put the ball up in the air. And yeah, let's check in with Ari Wolf. It's to go in the game. What are you going to do here? We're going to kick it away. Let our defense play. Heck, this is a heck of a game, though, isn't it? It's been an awesome game. Talk about the play your quarterback here down the stretch. Well, he's, he's played well all night. I mean, really, he has. They stopped us that a couple times there, but uh, but he's done what he had to do. That was a great play right there. So. Heck of a football game. Enjoy the last 40 seconds, Coach. You too. All right. Paul. All right. And Les Moss obviously will enjoy it a whole lot. If the Sharks can maintain that four-point lead with 40 seconds left. Garcia, seven touchdowns tonight. Three games in the postseason, 19 touchdowns, and only one interception. That's not too bad. I take That's that. That's pretty good. I tell you, I love Coach Moss over on the sideline. 40 seconds to go. Arena Bowl, a lot on the, lot on the line, and he's over there smiling and enjoying this game. But we know is Coach Guy and Coach Moss are really good friends. They were talking and laughing before the game. They were looking forward to the competition. So I love to see with 40 seconds to go with the ring on the line that they're both really enjoying competing against one another. Virgil Gray, number four, sets a return for Arizona. 
led the AFL in the regular season with five kick returns for touchdowns. DeMarco Simmons, big night catching the ball and running the ball, making the special teams tackle at the 13-yard line. So here comes Nick Davila. 23 out of 37, 301 yards now, and seven touchdowns to go along with one interception. You know Jacksonville has a number one offense in the league, so it's interesting that Coach Moss elects to say, hey, I'm going to let my defense win this game for us. I'm going to put, the, you know, put them back out on the field. I've got confidence in them. So I think that's saying a lot from Coach Moss, saying we're not going to continue to do this onside kick thing. We're going to kick it away and put it on our defense. 36 seconds remaining. Jacksonville leading by four. Both teams have all three timeouts remaining. Huge amount of pressure applied by Derek Summers. And a late flag. There is no intentional grounding because the quarterback was out of the box and reached the line of scrimmage with the football. Second down. Derek Summers, number four in the AFL in sacks in the regular season with 11 with a huge play right there. Hey, you guys See the scrimmage, right? Offensive line really just stepped down. Yeah, Nobody stepped out to block right? Summers at all. It was really an easy play for him, but a great job by Nick Davila here to be able to get out of the pocket and just get the ball away, not to take a sack in that situation. Second down 10, 31 seconds remaining in Arena Bowl 24. The Sharks leading by four. Davila with a nice pocket and a strike downfield to the 11-yard line. The defensive back stepping in for that catch, Marquise Floyd. You've seen a lot of these short touch passes all day long. You see in this situation, Nick Davila steps into this one, fires it right on the money. Big play, 25 seconds to go, puts him in a great position to score. 25 seconds left, that's a 25-yard gain. Davila to Floyd. And it's now first and 10 from the 12-yard line. Again with time. Gary Reed with the touchdown catch. Twelve yards, Nick Davila to Gary Reed. And Arizona now leads by two. The only question now, Paul, is did they score too quickly? <laughs> 21 seconds to go. A lot of time in arena football. Rattlers lead pushed to three. Paul, this is what separates arena football players. The ball's high into the outside. Reed knows that if he catches it, he's going right in or over the wall. Just does a tremendous job. A little hesitation move. Gets position. Great extension to be able to catch that, pull it down, knowing that he's going to bang into that wall. I was going to praise the throw, and it was a nice throw getting it out in front there, but most of the credit there has to go to Davila's receiver, Kerry Reed, as you pointed out and as we just saw. That's an outstanding catch. Well, we've already mentioned how Rob Windsor, uh, the best receiver for the Rattlers, one of the best in the league, and it moved on to the NFL. I think we've seen some pretty, pretty impressive plays by these receivers tonight. I mean, it, a lot of guys have shown up, showing that they can play this game. They can play at a high level. Wouldn't be surprised if you see some of these other guys being called up to the NFL level. Anthony Heron on the sideline. I'm with Chris Jackson. You joined the team late in this season, but you've got an Arena Bowl championship in your past. Do you think you guys can finish this one off? I think so. With the way our defense have played all year, uh, you know, they've had some breakdowns today, but what, what better way to come up big right now? And for your offense, you guys lost Rod Windsor right at the time that you came in. How gratifying is it for you guys to be able to possibly finish this game with a score? That's big. It's just a continue what uh, Rod and the offense did prior to, you know. We're talented. We're professionals. So we come in just grinding every day. Chris Jackson, one of the all-time greats, maybe getting another ring on his mantle. And Anthony, we finish coming down the stretch here right where we started with the Jacksonville quarterback in the center of your screen, Aaron Garcia.
the most successful quarterback in the history of the Arena Football League during the regular season. More passing yards, more passing touchdowns, zero rings. 21 seconds left and a three-point deficit. This is Jeff Hewley. So here he comes, 40 years old, 17 seasons under his belt, and 15 seconds away from tasting his first Arena Bowl title. His team trails 70 to 67. And you wonder, Ball, if these last 15 seconds dictates whether he retires or continues to play. 17 years, 40 years old. How long can you do this? I know I couldn't do it this long, so 15 seconds. If he makes a play, they win the game. Is this the end of the career for the great Aaron Garcia? Off the back foot once again, Jeff Hewley appeared to be open for a moment. The ball sailed out of the end zone. Now nine seconds left. Arizona leading by three. And he took a shot. Looked like there was a lot of contact there right before the ball got there. Could have been a pass interference, but he's taking a shot at the end zone. You see there's a lot of contact there at the end, but the ball was in there. Judgment called by the official. Garcia to Wilson, just inside the 10-yard line. First down, and timeout call. Two seconds remaining. Timeout, Jacksonville. Their first of the half, 30-second timeout. 17-yard gain, Garcia to Wilson. Knew they were going to be covering the end zone. He thought, hey, I'm just going to get myself in a good position so I can call any number of plays on this last play of the game. But talk about pressure. His career, his legacy, so many things are going to be defined by this moment. And he calls the plays ball. This you is up to him. This is up to him. What play does he want in this situation? Do you consider a field goal here at all? Huh? I think you can always consider it a field uh, consider a field goal, but come on. We're at this point. We got one chance. We got one play. We got one of the greatest quarterbacks in AFL history. Come on, we don't want to end in the tie. All right, they're going for it. And this is it, Aaron Garcia, 17 seasons later, the exact situation he wanted. Two seconds left, a touchdown will win it. Timeout, Arizona, their first timeout of the half. 30 seconds, charge timeout. Take a listen here to Aaron Garcia. This is how you play it out in your front yard. I think I've played this game a hundred times in my front yard. Playing in the Arena Bowl, playing in the Super Bowl. Two seconds to go. You're the quarterback. You got to make that play to win the game. Perfect scenario for Aaron Garcia to put that stamp on his career. If Garcia makes this happen, he'll have 400 yards passing tonight, eight touchdowns, and that coveted first Arena Bowl title. Touchdown to Ron Harvey. Garcia to Harvey. The Jacksonville Sharks are your Arena Bowl champions. Harvey playing, making big play after big play. Ball in the hands of Aaron Garcia to finish the game. Two seconds to go. Tremendous protection up front. Buying time. Does a great job of finding his receiver and making that big play. And the story is Aaron Garcia, but how about the strong hands of Jerron Harvey? That was not an easy catch. And we've seen it time and time again tonight that he said 
The guy hasn't lied to him yet. He said, put the ball up, put it in my area. I'll make a play for you. I know this whole team is extremely excited for Aaron Garcia. Everything that he's been through, all that he's accomplished to get to this point, have the ball in his hands and be able to make that play. Can you even imagine what must be going through his mind? Holding up one of his boys. And here's the play that did it. You Took his see, time. He's buying time, buying time. He snuck out into the hole, was able to get enough on it. Just enough on it. Jerron Harvey with the strong hands to pull that one in and hang on to it. And that is how the Jacksonville Sharks win Arena Bowl 24. And Aaron told me that a couple years ago when there was a stoppage in arena football that he was questioning whether he was going to come back or retire. And he said one of the big things that drew him back is that he loves this game. He wanted to be a steward of this game. And he wanted to be able to make sure that 20 years from now, his kids, his three kids knew what he did. And so he's come back. He's put his stamp on this league the last couple of years. Obviously now with the championship. You know, on his arm, he always has a wristband that says GIA, representing his three children. Aaron Garcia, joined by our Anthony Heron. With no doubt, the star of the game after 17 years, over 1,000 touchdowns, over 200 games. Aaron Garcia has finally gotten his Arena Bowl championship. How does it feel? Hey, man, all them touchdowns, that's the only one I'm going to care about for a long time. That ring, man, team kept fighting. You know, there was a time there where we were stumbling. You know, we stayed together, we stood up. Man, I love these guys. I love these kids of mine. Jacksonville, we bringing it home. Duval, Sacramento too, baby. You know that's where the fam is. And Aaron, 15 seconds on the clock, and you guys are down. Your legacy, in a way, on the line. What's going through your mind, and what do you say to your teammates in that huddle? I say nothing. Everybody's telling me over there, this is how storybooks are written. You guys, your time to shine. I'm over there nervous as heck. You know what I mean? I don't care how long I played this game. But I knew if I stayed out there, my dad always told me to play from the heart play to the end and that's what I was able to do and God you know God blessed us tonight God has always blessed me and uh, man I just love it I don't know what else to say and you bought so much time take me through that final plan Deron Harvey was so huge for you throughout the night were you thinking him the whole way he's my third option you know Jomo's my first option I got Jamarco coming across the middle and Jerron that's why we got him in there he's that big boy you know what I mean and I, I saw him out of the corner of my eye so I couldn't believe he was that open I just got it off before I got hit Oh, man, that's it. He, he made how many tremendous catches did he make? That's the guy right there tonight. Well, no doubt. AFL Nation, certainly happy for you, Aaron. Congratulations. Thank you very much. GIA all year right here. I love you guys. Thank you, guys. Back to you, Paul. Aaron Garcia and the Jacksonville Sharks, Arena Bowl champion, scoring on the final play of the game. I can't think of a better person to tee up with this question, Kurt, because you played in championship games in your late 30s. I'm sure you had nights where you thought about what would it be like to throw a game-winning touchdown pass, win the championship, and then just think about walking away. Well, I mean, you thought about it. I thought about it a couple years ago when I played in the Super Bowl uh, with the Arizona Cardinals. That What a perfect scenario that would be. And, you know, it's one of those things for Aaron Garcia where he has done everything. And had he not won this game and he walks away, yeah, it's easy to say, well, I've done everything. You know, I'm happy with my career. But we all know, you know if you're a great quarterback, if you've played this game, any game, for a long period of time, that you want that on your mantle. You want to say, yeah, I accomplished all this, but most importantly, I'm a champion. And so Aaron Garcia has that opportunity now. Who knows what he's going to do, but he has that opportunity where he can go home, sit down with his kids and say, okay, now I really have done everything. Is it time to walk away? And touchdown pass, the exclamation points on an outstanding postseason run to Jerron Harvey. Let's check in with Ari Wolf. Here we are down on the floor, one of the most amazing Arena Bowl championships we've ever had. I'd like to have everyone's attention in the building for the trophy presentation. But before we, before we get started, how about congratulations to the Arizona Rattlers on an amazing season. Now to present the championship trophy to the 2011 world champion, Jacksonville Sharks, is the commissioner, Jerry Curse. Thank you, Ari. First of all, to the Arizona fans, you showed the world arena football is back better than ever. Again, congratulations to the Arizona Rattlers on and off the field, first class 
Ron Schertz, Joe Winham, the entire staff did a tremendous, tremendous job and need to be congratulated. I've been to all 24 Arena Bowls, and this was indeed, as predicted, the best ever. Fans, two teams. It gives me great pleasure on behalf of the owners across the league in the Arena Football League to present the James F. Foster, named after the man who invented it, the reason we're all here, Arena Bowl Trophy, 24 to Les Moss, Jeff Bushy and the ownership, and the wonderful, tremendous players of the Jacksonville Sharks. Thank you very much. Take the trophy. Thank you, thank you. Jacksonville fans, we're bringing home the big shiny one. We're going to bring it right down Main Street. Thanks a lot, Arizona. Great, great crowd, great fans, great organization, great team. Can't say anything more about them. Congratulations on a great game. That was the best ever, Jerry. And thank you for putting on such a great show. Aaron Garcia, where's Aaron? Aaron Garcia. All right, the Jacksonville Sharks, Les Moss, the head coach, Jeff nothing Bushy, but smiles. We also saw Aaron Garcia, Jeff the quarterback. Bushy. The Sharks, Arena Bowl champions. Your thoughts on what you saw tonight? Man, I hope everybody at home was watching because that's why I love this game. I loved it when I was playing. I continue to love it. This is what arena football is all about, and we got a great show tonight. Well, thinking back to the beginning of the season, I think if you didn't have a specific team you were in love with, boy, if Aaron Garcia could have a chance on the last play exactly. to win a title, that'd be a good way to close it out and there is the man the man in all caps Aaron Garcia now has that arena bowl title thanks to a touchdown pass to Jerron Harvey on the final play of the game that's it from Arizona the final score 73 70 Jacksonville concluding our 2011 AFL season congratulations to the arena bowl champion Jacksonville Sharks up next, the Broncos visit the Cowboys in their preseason debuts. For Kurt Warner, Ari Wolf, Anthony Herod, I'm Paul Burmeister. Good night, and thank you for watching Arena Bowl 24. That would be nice. But... Tell us about this game and that final drive coming up with a win. Man, I don't care about all those years. I don't care about all them touchdowns. I care about that last touchdown. This team right here, this championship, man, I got so much love for these guys and the way that they fought, the coaches, this whole organization, my family here, all my friends. Man, I, I can't believe this moment. I love it. Arizona Rattlers fans were incredible. That team played great. And this is a, this is a crazy good league. People got to watch this football, and it's going to continue to grow. All right? I, man, I can't say, say enough about this league and this team right now. Congratulations, an awesome ambassador for the game and a tremendous MVP. Way to go, Aaron. All right. Shark Week! That's it here from down on the field. Arena Bowl 24.